Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. a Cuban Santa to get to. We have a Miami Sequarium jingle to get to. <laughs> We've got a couple of enormous football games this weekend between some of the very few teams in football that we know or think to be good. We think there are seven of them. Four of them play each other. Two of them, and not everyone is sure about. The rare weekend, and with two, not one, but two Super Bowl previews. How about that? Is that right? Yes. So you've got 49ers, Ravens. You've yes. got uh, Dolphins, uh, Cowboys. Yep. And uh, Detroit, Minnesota can't be a Super Bowl preview. <laughs> Same conference, Dan. Uh, Cleveland yep. and Houston can't be a Super Bowl preview. Uh, Jacksonville and Cleveland can't be a Super Bowl preview. You identified the two. You did. You got him. <laughs> a lot of people have Big weekend. have doubts about the Cowboys and the Dolphins, but I wanted to ask you guys because I think I feel it on me differently as somebody who is now self-employed and is running a business versus when I was an employee. Right. We are right now smack dab in the middle of America mailing it in at work week, correct? <laughs> like this is while wanting bonuses. This yeah. is but this is right here. This is where salaried employees and people who have the comfort of health care and don't have to be at work every day so they know they're about to get a week off. And is this it right now though? Because it I didn't feel it as much on Monday and Tuesday. Mike took the day off today because he just wants to be obsessed with signing day. Right. He's dropping off bags of cash. I mean, what, what is he doing? In a sweatsuit like the guy from Blue Chips? We got to stop the sweatsuit. I, I, I got to tell Mike, it's either one or the other. You can wear the top with something different well, he's or not the here bottom right with now. something different. He's not right. here right now. I'm saying I'll he tell him when he's yeah. here. Mm -hmm. You can't wear the full thing. The full outfit's just kind of goofy. Well, it's, it's dad style, right? It's Bob Huggins style. Once you, you've you've Huggy given bear. you've given up. Once you've done the the whole sweatsuit, you've given up as someone who cares about anything. Hard disagree. Put it on Hard the poll, disagree. please. Really loves Juju. comfort wear. Put it on the poll, Juju at Lebetard Show. Once you've gone full jumpsuit <laughs> as an adult male, have you given up on all things? Dan, uh, we were talking before the show, and I'm wondering if you're as worried. I don't know if the word is worried that we're feeling about Mike, and it would be funny if it happened. We think that Mike might be UM's Connor Stallions. Like, we think that Mike might be the guy that's on the outskirts that they keep around. And they're like, oh, you have, here's a little bit of information. You're a big shot. And then when something goes down, he's being poised to be the fall guy. Like, he's the one that you see the movie about where it's like, oh, the president of the company isn't actually the president of the company. It's the president's wife that has all of these accounts in, you know, this other country that we were, you know, laundering money through. Like, it seems like that may be what's possibly happening here with Mike. And I don't know if he's aware of that. But, like... I think that we all came to the same realization today because he's sending out tweets where he's like hinting at things like if he's, you know, wheeling and dealing, making all these big moves. And we're like, buddy, you're going to be the first one to go down, I think, if something if something happens here. We gave as a company, Tyler Van Dyke, a bunch of money. I don't know oh. if I'm implicated in whatever it is you've created as a scenario for Mike being a fall guy. But you could see that that might happen, right? Like, can we warn him that this may happen? Like, tread lightly, be careful. So they're giving him a couple of crumbs just to keep him happy. But he's really, like, he's the fall guy. When when 
when stuff goes down, Mike's going to prison? Is that what you're saying? I think prison is a little strong. Possibly. I, I mean, I, a fall I, guy I, usually goes to prison, I think. I, I, okay. I mean, White collar. Put okay. it on the poll, please. At Levitard He'll be playing show. tennis there. Does the fall guy usually go to prison? Uh, I don't know uh, how to properly assess the lane that Mike Ryan is keeping with the University of Miami, but I've never seen anything like it, and it could end with him being Nevin Shapiro. I suppose, if he's doing secret fraudulent things. I can assess it. We have a tweet that we can show of uh, Mike Ryan this morning. National Signing Day, whispering talent acquisition and chills. So I think Connor Stallions is a proper comparison. You see this this paper trail, though, that's like being left? Like, this is not not smart. Mm Mm-hmm. You can also see the rest of the paper trail with two ninety nine a month by going into his secret uh, Twitter account for only exclusive members uh, so that you can get the real secret information. Because he is plugged in on what it is the University of Miami is doing. That's unquestionable. To answer your original question, it's tomorrow. Today is the last day of productivity. Really? Tomorrow, everyone is just, I am done with it. Yo estoy aquí a trabajar every single day for the rest of the year. Okay. Uh, Tony okay. says he is starting here. today. I'll do a live show okay. next week too. Right. I'll just do a live show. We're gonna get Tony's. Well, top you had a live show on Sunday. You canceled, so you I won't. didn't cancel. The fiber optic cable in my building snapped uh, underground. Hey. What do you want me to do? That's I, a lot of, of, I didn't have internet happens. for five hey, days. Hey, our our family, our people made a boat cross the ocean to get or a truck cross the ocean to get here. And here you're talking about a little cable was broken? Go to the public library. You gave too much detail on Go the to cable. McDonald's what where the internet is that? free. A fiber optic yeah. cable. You're here. That you're that you're like well, I do this, I do that, buddy. I can solve any problem. Well, the internet didn't work. I can't fix it. Do you want it or you want it? They sent two Cuban guys to fix it. Not one, but two. <laughs> and neither of them fixed it. The second guy did. You have family? Go to your family's house. Their, their internet cable broke, too. Everybody's internet cable got cut. Everyone's just running around cutting all your internet cables. Get out of here. It's always the second guy that fixes it. Do you want it or do you want it? It is just funny how helpless we feel when we lose internet. I just can't do anything. I, I love it. I need to sit in a dark room. If internet's gone, I, want, I need to sit in a dark room. Well, uh, put it on the poll, uh, please, at Levitard Show. Do you feel at your most helpless uh, when you've lost internet? <laughs> but I will say I had a remarkably helpless experience the other day, Stugatz, that I wonder if this this way has happened to any of you listening, because I've talked before about the one place where pain takes a second to get to your brain. You stub your toe, you know something bad is coming, and it takes a second. In the it doesn't get there, it doesn't get there immediately, but you know it is coming. The other day, I guess it was probably a month ago, I'm driving through a light and I'm like caught right in between Mm -hmm. and as I've made the decision to go and I'm going to be pretty close to running this red light I see out of the corner of my eye that it says photos are taken here for people who run red lights and so I what do you what are you shaking your head at Chris I'm saying that I don't believe those anymore there was a time a few years ago where I was getting I got a few tickets with that I haven't got one of those in four or five years it happened to me coming right off the causeway they took a picture they got me later so Dan's right he has every How right recently? to be concerned. It was, I don't know, one yeah. of our last days at okay. the Clevelander. I mean. Every patriot knows that those are unconstitutional. Well, that's the thing. There's some places that they've outlawed them, but the cameras stayed up. Like, they're disconnected, but they're still there. So, like, effectively, they're doing the same thing. Like security fear. at your house. You know, no, like Michael, a lot of people, no well, maybe not for you, but some people will put up cameras or things like that that aren't actually connected just to kind of scare people away a little bit. All right, you guys are doing this, but this is not the story. Oh, they still work. And they got me. Yeah. But what I'm telling you is that as I'm going through, I've now caught it out of the corner of my eye. I see the flash that takes the picture of it. I feel violated, but now I have to wait. Did you put up a middle finger? I have to wait for the mail to get there and completely violate me. And wait till I tell you. You say that I committed the violation. Ah, ah, ah. The government violated me because the ticket was $158. $158. Barry. And I'm like, I didn't even know there were tickets that, that ran that high mm-hmm. for, for something that wasn't a major infraction. That's, that's low. 
$158 yeah, for running. Tickets, tickets good out there. Were you speeding? No, it, it doesn't measure speed. It just uh, it just takes a picture of you. Wait a minute. So I'm going to – you're telling me that I've got an unconstitutional $158 fee that has nagged at me since I ran that light a month ago because I knew as soon as I ran it, now I've just got this general haunting around me. I've done something wrong. I've been caught by the government. And I feel like if democracy falls, it's going to be our entire life in about 20 years. Damn, I saw Leave the World Behind last night. Oh, oh buddy. Oh, buddy. Stugatz We're in for it. Didn't like that one. Stugatz <laughs> didn't like that movie. He wants to be told at the end what to think, even though I thought at the end they pretty much told Wrap us Wrap it up to with think. a bow, please. I mean, seriously. You did speak to a rush that I love, because at this point in my life, how many rushes do I get? Right where I feel alive, when I'm approaching a yellow light and it's about to turn red, and I'm like r- about to run a red light, that's a rush, and I love that feeling. And I turn into a baseball umpire. If I get to the line before it turns red, I'm safe. I turn into like I'm literally in my car driving alone, and I'll do this motion if I make it. If I don't get to the white line by the time the red hits, I I bang myself out. You're out of here. Dan, I will tell you this. Your $158 ticket gets bumped up to $262 yes. if you fail to pay the ticket on yeah. time. It's standard in yeah. the state of Florida. Call Alex Hanna. Yeah. But Barry. that's, that's no, your, get Barry. here's your option, though. Pay $158 to the government or pay $170 to a lawyer to take away your $158. I believe the lawyer is no cheaper points. than the $158. I think that's Ticket where, wizard. I've I heard his that, new ad. I think that is where they make their money, by being cheaper than the ticket. We used to be Unger and Coet. Now and, we're the ticket wizard. But you generally need a police officer to not show up. In this case, they've got photographic proof that is unconstitutional. They do not have they photographic up, proof though. of anything, Dano. That is not you driving that car. Well, but that car That's your is my responsibility. <laughs> they don't have proof of me driving the car, but they do have proof that it is my car. It'd be car. worse if it was somebody else. Now what you know, which you can prove in a court of law. Yeah. I think I've told this story before, but I one time drove to Central Florida to fight a speeding ticket in a city I never visited. Oh, yeah. and the I cops, think you have told The cops this. showed up. No way. And I went with evidence that I was never in that town, <laughs> and I couldn't even show up before the cop was like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you just slinked out of the courtroom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had, I can picture you having like a briefcase of material. Oh, I was so ready. I watched Suits for like a week beforehand. <laughs> I imagine you being super eager like and disappointed that the cop just uh, feared you and walked off, that you were ready to I had sun pass receipts that showed I was by the airport in Miami that day. It yeah, was so great. John Morant ran off the court last night yelling, I kept receipts too. That was you walking into that courtroom. Is anyone else waiting for him to celebrate with a gun? Like in this week he did a post yesterday before the game good vibes only where it was just him in a car dancing and i just put my hand on my head like oh no oh, you no, started oh, looking no. around you're like what can like, i oh, see no, you're waiting car. for get through this, where get is it where, it's like a hidden picture in highlights magazine where is it i know this isn't a surprise to anybody but he makes kind of a huge difference they win at new orleans <laughs> Uh, they win last night. They've been totally irrelevant, and the only reason they matter is because he exists. And furthermore, Stugatz, very rare is the player of that size in the history of the sport that could get the game winner at the rim. Yeah. That is not like Jimmy Butler doesn't get those. Jimmy Butler doesn't get them at the rim. Jimmy Butler's got to get jumpers and stuff that's further away from the rim. But Jimmy Butler, uh, I've seen precious little – from much of anybody, I'm just bringing up Jimmy Butler because he's much bigger. Anybody in the history of the sport, that slight, it's basically Russell Westbrook and this guy in terms of you're more athletic than everybody else, even though you weigh 185 pounds. He's so much fun to watch. They were down big uh, after the first half in that game, but to see him hit that game winner, the way he hit that game winner, the kind of game he had, the coolest part was the celebration. He just stood there, arms folded, waiting for his teammates to come and hug him. It was a really cool moment. He's spectacular, and when you talk about getting game winners at the rim like that, like my first thought of a, a smaller guy being able to do it would be Dwayne Wade, but John Morant is two inches shorter than Dwayne Wade. Like To be able to do that at that size with that level of leap, like he is a spectacular player. It's no wonder that Memphis has been largely awful without him for most of the year. We will get to this Cuban Santa in a second, but Chris Cody, would you do me the favor for the uh, national audience and the Max audience that might not be familiar locally the way we are with the Miami Seaquarium commercial or the Miami Seaquarium in general? (laughs) The Miami Seaquarium is a profoundly sad amusement park for dying animals who are encaged and should be free, and we pay tickets. 
we pay money to see a manatee or a whale in a tank that isn't kept very well. It's just a sad <laughs> place that is sort of stuck in the 1980s and smells like it. It's great jingle, though. But here is the uh, a portion of the jingle. <laughs> And kids love it because they don't know that the mildewy cages of death are terribly sad and lacking in freedom for animals that would prefer to be out in the wild. But we have uh, produced a new commercial for uh, the Miami Seaquarium, a new jingle. Hurry up, there's not much left to see at Miami Seaquarium. You'll see orcas in cages. Pools of steel tears. Learn about cruelty as we take off their ears. Time's running out to see these animals alive at Miami Seaquarium. Get a lifetime guilty conscience with every regular admission of complicity. This offer lasts until the authorities come splashing in. Miami Seaquarium. Taking off animal ears? Your ears? What? I think it was years. What? But <laughs> splashing I take in. Off their ears. Take off their ears. <laughs> All right, let me hear it again because I felt like to? I felt something. <laughs> it actually kind of adds to it. Don't they live longer in these things? Anyway, I, uh, I do they? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I don't they know. definitely do, but I mean, that's not here. It's a sad. Ex- it's a sad longer life. They are certainly preyed on. Because in the wild, they get eaten. That's right, and and in the wild, they have to kill what they eat as opposed to having a helpful trainer just come over and give them some sardines. <laughs> Imagine if we had human zoos, or like it was just like a human that's just been in captivity we're on our way like home. sounds kind of nice it does like <laughs> feed me every day if there's a tv with red zone on i'm okay it's prison you'll see orcas in cages pools of steel tears learn about cruelty as we take off their ears Time's running out to see these animals alive at Miami Seaquarium. Get a lifetime guilty conscience with every regular admission of complicity. This offer lasts until the authorities come splashing in. Miami Seaquarium. I still don't know. I still don't. I know heard ears. If I mean. that is, I still don't know as you say it whether you're saying ears or years. How are you guys? All of you uh, have young children here, other than Jeremy and Tony. How are you with Santa? Do the kids still believe in Santa? Santa! What is happening? What's <laughs> happening right now? No, don't do this. Santa's, Princess Claire? Santa's yes. real. A much too late spoiler alert for everyone watching live in their car. Mm-hmm. I'm just asking the question. Yes, my daughter does. My daughter is six. And uh, it, we're, it, it's a dangerous game because she's in school now. So she comes home and talks to kids. And it's just, yes, I, I'm getting to that point where I'm trying to protect the sanctity of Santa. Right. So am I. I wish it was the opposite, but so am I. I'm trying to protect it. But it's still working is what you're saying. Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately. Well, why Santa, unfortunately? What are you guys Santa's talking about? Real. I, 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 Santa is real. Uh, but... I, I just don't want to, man. I'm sorry. I just I, saw him yesterday. Yeah. Sounds like we're surrounded by a bunch of little boys and girls who got coal for Christmas because they behaved attitude, bad. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't allow. Oh, I can't. I, I, I can't allow her to believe that some white guy is coming into our house leaving presents. White. I'm sorry. He's my best friend. He's my mentor. Yeah. He doesn't have to be white, uh, Tony. Well, can that's you, what the media is saying. Can you introduce us? Fake news media. Learn about cruelty. Can you introduce us to Cuban Santa, please? Tony? So here's here's the thing, Dan. Here in Miami, obviously, you go to different places when you're a kid and you get to see the mall Santa somewhere. In Miami, it's totally different because it's our culture. So our Santa is represented by our culture. Like, Roy's culture should be represented by his Santa. Like, everybody gets to have their own Santa. This right here is my Santa. <laughs> That's your Santa? That's my Santa. I mean, he should be able to speak uh, the language that your kids are understanding best. So what he said there is they want a cookie tour or whatever. And he said, which is, it's done. I got it. Don't worry about it. Does it fit in a box? I got you. Let's play it one more time. (laughs) 
I, this is honestly the kind of Santa we need. I had a totally opposite situation at the mall where my daughter this year is asking for a puppy. Oh, and, you know, oh and boy. I'm like, all right, you got to go ask for Santa. So she went up to Santa. She asked him for a puppy. And I see him. I'm like, kind of like, well, how's he going to play this? He's like, oh, I'm Santa. I do toys. I can't do a puppy. I'm like, so now I can't give her, like, you just, affa- hey, shut your mouth, old man. Nod oh, your head wow. and say, hey, have you been good this year? Wow. And nod your head. You don't be, a- you're affecting the way families do things. Play the part. It's just yeah. like, he's like, no, yeah. the, you know I can't make a dog. I only make toys with well, my Well, Santa does have a workshop. You don't can't yeah, build a puppy in a yeah, workshop. You're Santa, but he could, you can produce anything. No, it's a Santa, great workshop. Santa though. could go and adopt a pet on your behalf and then take it to your daughter. But Santa can't build a puppy. So I, I'm assuming Santa said that because Santa has to check the availability. Lots of people like puppies this times of year. I just need a lot of nodding from Santa. Have you been good this year? What do you? What would you like for Christmas? Okay, on your way, Missy. You want a like, bunch of it. yeses. You don't want no's. I don't right. need. Oh, yes, that's funny. Right. I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Claire has seen six different Santas in the past month. Oh boy, six? Huh? <laughs> like speed dating with Santa? What's going on there? Yeah, that's basically. Isn't it. she suspicious? No. Of what? Has she seen the Cuban Santa yet? I think think so. What do you do, Chris? What do you do? Because you don't know what Santa's going to bring your daughter. So, like, do you get the things a puppy might need just in case Santa does bring the puppy? Because then, if Santa's not able to procure this puppy, then you have all of these things and and you're kind of in a weird spot. No, I had to call an audible because she came running up to me afterwards and she's like, Santa doesn't do puppies. So I'm like, oh, I guess mommy and daddy will get that for you. So now (laughs) it's not going to be from Santa. Like, Santa ruined that. Guy was looking out for you. Because he doesn't know if you really want to get a dog or if you don't. So he's like, hey, Just buddy, be I different. Do that. Be like, oh, we'll see. Ha, 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 pretty girl. He was Wait, looking out for you. So Santa was looking out for mom and dad. Exactly. <laughs> Interesting twist. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, <laughs> at Levitard Show. Does Santa got to zip it and nod at the mall instead of giving away anything in the way of family secrets? I will also tell you guys that you want to break the news to your kids about Santa. There's no news to be broken. I'm just saying you don't want them to find out from anyone else. Stay ahead of it. I'm telling you. I mean... This place reminds me of Santa's workshop, except it smells like mushrooms and everyone looks like they want to hurt me. Oh. I never told my kids anything about Santa. <laughs> and yet here I they am. Still believe, they <laughs> still believe they're in college and they still believe in Santa, as you should, kids, as everyone should. Tony, did you ask Santa for a fiber optic t- cable or what? No, the Cuban guy brought it for me. How oh. does this work, Tony? You were supposed to be on Sunday. This is an avenue here. Have you noticed? I told you that Shannon Sharp didn't need Skip Bayless, and he doesn't need Skip Bayless. And Shannon Sharp has climbed into a rarefied air here with just a handful of podcasts that we're lucky enough to be among because he's occupying the space immediately after football games. He's doing something out west after football game that's entertaining with Ocho Cinco, and you're competing against that, Tony, and he buried you on Sunday. You're, you're competing in that time slot with Juju for that space, and he had the fiber optics he needed. You, all we got from you was silence and not uh, the appointed rounds. Can you imagine 100%. tuning in on your football Sunday for just about anything, the pregame show, the postgame show? Shannon Sharp was hurt, man. They put him on that stiff, starched, old person's set on CBS a long time ago <laughs> that he couldn't fit into. That pregame show hasn't changed any. It's old people television. Shannon Sharp And Nate Burleson. Didn't, well, <laughs> Shannon Sharp was doing what Nate Burleson was doing. Nate is so good. Trying to fit <laughs> That's in. That's what I mean. He's so good, and the rest of that show is so not. <laughs> it's an old person show. CBS goes for that demo. But Shannon Sharp's career at that point was pretty dead. And now he has resurrected it because people like Tony can't keep up with their fiber optics. All they need to do is get on the air, and you couldn't get on the air. Yeah. That is true, and I'll take the blame for that, even though the building was to blame and the fiber optic cable was to blame. But That's more, importantly, blame works, more right? importantly, we've beaten Shannon Sharp for 14 straight weeks. This week we let him have one. I don't believe that. By the way, if you want to beat Shannon Sharp, God bless football is actually competing against Shannon Sharp in the category of the Sports Podcast Awards for Best American Football Podcast. You can go to sportspodcastgroup.com and vote for us there. You could vote for nothing personal as well there. David Sampson is going to join us next to give you a little taste of sports and business. Sampson up next. Stugatz, last night I sent Erlene Cody, Chris Cody, and Greg Cody a text in which I said that Greg Cody's grace in defeat 
in the Turk off <laughs> is one of the great surprises of my entire lifetime. <laughs> that he did not uh, go down swinging, yelling, screaming, infuriated. He just took it. I mean, uh, well, he said Roy's was just better. <laughs> Chris Cody uh, says uh, he wrote back, truly surprising, but I actually believe him. Roy's turkey was that damn good. And then Cody himself wrote, I just texted Roy that I would have been almost embarrassed to win. I thought my deep-fried Cajun bird was really good as usual, but he hit upon a recipe, well executed, and nailed it. And somebody writes in here, Roy, saying of me, Dan's disrespect of Roy's turkey process was mildly infuriating. It was. It was to me as well. I mean, I think, Roy, you would agree. It's the, the first segment, we didn't start with a bang. Oh, okay. Yes, I can agree with that. All yeah, right. sure. Yeah. The excuses really, were, were, were dropping. But he, but he stuck the landing, and but that's all that matters. Here's the thing. Yeah. I got to get the turkey from the butcher. It needs to be a fresh turkey. Right. I bought a store-bought turkey, <laughs> which right. was frozen. We and it needed to be defrosted. Mm-hmm. Just the facts. And yeah. then I had to brine the thing. Mm-hmm. So all that takes days. Yeah. And then I had to prep the turkey the night before so I could bring it in here to actually cook. Yeah. So that's the process. Roy, my apologies. My apologies. <laughs> I am wrong. <laughs> You cooked something that, if it did indeed deserve to take a week to cook, it was worth the wait. It was well made. It was uh, you showed great care. So thank you, and I'm sorry that I mildly infuriated both the audience and cooks <laughs> everywhere. I can basically only make eggs and grilled cheese sandwiches. I know nothing of cooking. Oh you, Jesus Christ! You voted for Cody's uh, turkey, though. I did. You did. I know. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not entirely too sure that you gave him Greg Cody's I did. turkey. I did. Wow. I did. So you gave him the dry turkey. That I, was Greg's. I gave him a piece of your, a bite of yours, and a bite of Greg's. He chose Greg's. I mean, you and you won. call my turkey dry. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry for everything. Okay, <laughs> so you win. It was a big win, and my apologies. David Sampson is with us now, and there are a number of things that I want to talk to him about. Nothing personal, as I've told you, is the name of his podcast. It too is up. What are you smiling about, David Sampson? Is he frozen? What's happening? Uh, what is happening with David Sampson? Okay. The I same can't. thing that happens every week? Fiber up the cable. <laughs> Sampson, why are you laughing? I'm laughing. It's unbelievable. I, it really is. This I, is wild. I don't understand. This time it seems like Wi-Fi. I don't understand. Say it Not again. Not on Wi-Fi. Say it again, David. And I'm going to let you go if it happens again. Go ahead. Guys, like, that's... All right, you're out of here. Yeah, he's right now. I don't know what Stop to do it. about that. I don't I don't David, know. David, we're really not we're messing not with you. We're not doing this on purpose. David, we're not. It's not a general metal lark incompetence. It's just happening only with you. No. <laughs> All right, I think we're back. Let's try it again. Honestly, David, I know this looks like we are messing with you right now. I swear to you, we are not. <laughs> the number of shows that uh, I do per week would blow your mind. All right, we're back. David, Let's just ride I this. don't care whose fault yeah. it is. It just keeps happening. So why were you laughing? Why are you laughing at us as I get to the topic of the day? I know why he's laughing the day? at us. What, go ahead. Somebody answer my question. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm picturing you cooking eggs and cooking grilled cheese, and I, too, am the same way, except you have a different personal situation than I do. So I'm laughing that it doesn't matter if you're married, if you're divorced, if you have the most amazing wife. There is people. There are people who cook and people who don't, and it's totally binary. And that turkey cook-off didn't interest me because it's not something I could relate to because I can never do it. You might not be interested, but one of the great things always in television is the show that debuts uh, big and loud with a giant famous guest on day one. And then by day three, it's a local chef and a recipe because of how popular on television anything being cooked is. This is an enormous economy. It might as well. I'm I'm going to I should be. It's not as big as sports, but cooking as entertainment is pretty giant. People who like cooking like it the same way people who like sports like sports. But it's like looking at a commercial for re- a restaurant and thinking that if you make it, it'll look like it does on the box. If you knew the way these cooking shows, it's not actual food, I don't think. Like the commercials for a quarter pounder, that's not how quarter pounders look in real life because they're not using actual food. 
That's true, actually. I've uh, Stugatz. I don't know. That's if you, not true. It is cooking true. Cooking challenges. True. They're not cooking fake food. They're no, not cooking the, the real part. Food. The part that he's true. The he's, part about the quarter pounder. He's right. No, about. yeah, that yes. is fake, so right. that it looks aesthetic. But the cooking challenges. They're making real meals. Yes, but on your fast food commercials, when you're watching them, those are all things that are not edible. The, yeah. the Whopper, the sandwiches, those are all made artistically, and you cannot eat them. They're made to look better. No one can make them to look that good. Those dishes. <laughs> Dishes have to be cold by the time the judges get them in all these cooking competitions. That's my only beef with all this stuff is, like, they'll be trying stuff. And it's like, you know that thing's been sitting there for seven minutes and it's not hot anymore. So, David, you don't like cooking shows because you're not, like, you don't cook because you don't bake. You can't do it, so you don't watch them. Because I feel like you can get something out of just watching people that are great at what they do and find entertainment in it. And almost admire it more because, like, I can't do that. This person's great at this. Yeah, so it's, to me it's like watching paint dry. So I don't watch like uh, top America's next model or next That's top it. chef. None of those shows do I watch. Right. I watch Survivor though. Tonight's the Survivor finale, which is always a bittersweet night for me in the you calendar. You couldn't really do that either though. I mean. I absolutely did that. I just got oh. voted out very quickly. A week or two. I mean, you were out very quickly. You didn't. You... As quick as possible, I believe. That's true. No, I could have quit day one. I got voted out day three. Take us Cup through. Of coffee. Take us through She's what something is going forward, if you don't mind. Take us through what's happening, please, with Yamamoto. Oh, I would like to talk about Yamamoto, but can I teach you one thing first about your yellow lights for the audience? I think they'll be happy. Sure. So the yellow light, when you know a yellow light, the length, it's about one second per ten miles per hour that the speed limit is on the road that you're driving. So if you're on a 55 mile an hour road and there's a light that's turning yellow, it'll stay yellow for about five, five and a half seconds. If you're on a 25 mile an hour road, it'll stay yellow only for about two and a half to three seconds. So it's about one second per 10 miles per hour. So that's how you can judge whether you should floor it or stop. Dave, I can't do math while I'm driving that fast, knowing where I'm going. So <laughs> yes, all I do is I look, I look at the pedestrian sign. It yeah. usually has a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, yeah. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I know one. Yeah. There's about a three-second one There's where I can speed seconds. through that. He's talking about once it's yellow. Yeah. You're talking about before it's yellow. No. Uh, once you, it's yellow, I actually judge it by the turning lane. If I'm at the no. turning lane, I can easily pass that light. Oh, yeah. Tony's actually right. Pre-yellow, just look at the countdown clock. And then it, once it gets to, like, five, you should be kind of probably slowing down. But, like, most of us turn into, like, Fast and Furious. We, like, start hitting NAS buttons yeah. in our car and, like, going as fast as we can to get through. It actually is pretty easy math if you think about it. But the other thing you have to do when you're going through a yellow light, if you're thinking of stopping, make sure you look in the rear view mirror because the guy behind you may think you're going. Right. And that's how a lot of people get rear ended. Mm -hmm. Yamamoto. So Yamamoto is a pitcher who is a Japanese pitcher, 25 years old, wins the Japanese version of the Cy Young every single year. He's got four plus pitches. He's got seven teams after him. And someone's going to pay this guy $300 million, like a Garrett Cole type contract. And he's never pitched an inning in the big leagues. And I'm realizing the reason why this is happening, the desperation for pitching is so significant in a sport where starting pitchers don't even go three times through the lineup. They don't go eight, nine innings anymore but baseball's trying to get back to starting pitching mattering. So they're loving the fact that this could be an ace in the making. But for me, were I to be in position to sign a player of that stature, I'm not giving him a 10-year deal for $300 million because what if he becomes Dice K? You don't believe in can't miss, but people are behaving as if this person is can't miss and all you need is two biz, two bidders in a non-salary cap sport and everything will go crazy there who are the can't miss i'm trying to think in my lifetime lebron james bryce harper who were the other absolute can't miss people i mean shaq it doesn't matter, though, uh, David, whether you think can't miss, can't miss, or can. Uh, this person is going to restructure the way salaries work, is he not? Well, he, he's restructuring only in that he's getting an amount of money without having proved anything. And it's great for the Japanese professional league because what players do 
who are here playing in MLB when they don't make it. Like if you remember a Marlin named Dan Straley, maybe a name you don't remember, but he was a pitcher for the Marlins. And he went over to Korea and he has continued to have a career there. So people play overseas and you can sometimes come back like a Miles Mikolas with the St. Louis Cardinals. He came back and then got a huge contract for being good overseas. So it's, it's a whole new world. We never really looked at it that way 25 years ago. We were much more suspect about the ability to move from one league to the other. But I guess starting with Ichiro and going through a bunch of those Yankees, Tanaka, Matsui, et cetera, that it's possible this guy. The love of God. Oh, man. All right. Get rid of him. That's it. What were you going to ask He's going to be so upset. What man. were you going to ask Well, him I'm just wondering ask? who he's blaming in that scenario. Like, the pitcher, yes, he hasn't proved anything, but there are two teams, more than two teams, who think that pitcher could be really, really good. So how do you prevent it from happening? I mean, every, everyone <laughs> thinks. Everyone thinks that pitcher is good. Well, and he's pitched in professional baseball, right, where he was dominant and you have teams right now all across the league buying out their top prospects out of arbitration we saw it in Milwaukee they paid their top prospect eight years I think 82 million dollars he hasn't done anything on a major league field so to take a guy who's a 25 year old professional who seems like it can't miss when you have all these different bidders it, it sort of just makes sense at market value to me we have to stop with David Sampson during the max hour. Like, I, I, that's it, okay? It's over. That's the last time that we're doing that. I, I don't know how many times we have to stumble over the same mistake, how many uh, Cuban engineers and fiber optics people we have to send to his house to jerry-rig it with an assortment of toilet paper and wires. Uh, it's one of the crazier things I've been a part of because we are working on this outside of the show. We're well, like, we have to test this. It works perfectly. He does other podcasts, and then he joins this hour, and it goes quiet, and I have no... No explanation for and it. he thinks we're sabotaging him i mean he does I it mean. would be funny if we just started doing that from now on because our best joke is incompetence and you guys have heard me for a while say the problem with your best joke being incompetence is if you don't have any other jokes you're just incompetent i wanted to ask him about tommy devito's agent just getting the boot after this bad pr he didn't get the boot. He didn't get the boot. I mean, he, he got the boot. he got the blame for it, and he's essentially, hey, you you're not handling my marketing anymore. Did you do uh, Did you do the boot because Italy's shaped like a boot? Is that what you? Uh... That's right. No chance. There's no he way connection. he did that. He and did somehow not make I just connection. And somehow I just heard Samson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here, baby. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> the shadowy haunting <laughs> remains of Samson. All right. Levitardaf.com. I'm still here. <laughs> Juju, please put it on the poll at Lebetard Show. Are you surprised that a ticket for running a red light is one hundred and fifty-eight dollars? <laughs> uh, we continue to have technical issues with David Sampson, but now we've got the reverse of the other issues that we've had. We can't get rid of his sound. He is just <laughs> wandering around the premises here, talking into a microphone, and we can't eliminate it. So while you're here, David, I suppose I will just ask you, where are we with the merch store? How is it doing during the holidays? LebetardAF.com is where people can get the stuff that they can wear out in public and other stuff that isn't clothing. <laughs> what are you laughing about? You can wear everything in public. Why would you caveat it that? Well, way? because that's there are some things thing. that are sexual innuendo with Greg Cody's face on it, and yeah. that's just something I would wear around the bedroom. I, that's not, you, but it's up to the person who buys it. I, I mean, agreed, right, yes. but I'm I'm I am putting my particular <laughs> repressed imprint on the merch store and telling you some of that stuff is not to be worn out in public. I think that everything we have on lebetardaf.com is to be worn in public. And do you want to know what the most popular item is? Sure. There's a shirt out there for a Miami Heat player, and it's a Juan Wick shirt. I don't know if we can get a picture of that. Yeah, uh, uh, Jaime Jaquez is becoming a star. He's got a Hotels.com commercial now with uh, Jimmy Butler, and people are noticing that he's one of the best rookies in the sport. I don't know that he can win Rookie of the Year when you've got Mike Holmgren and uh, Victor Tempe Check. Tampa. Mike, Mike, Mike Holmgren is a football Check. coach. Mike yep. Holmgren, if he were dominating basketball, <laughs> be it would weird. be really yeah. amazing. Yeah. Strong yeah. inside. Different amazing. sport. Yeah. Good in the low post. Oh, yeah. Chet Holmgren. <laughs> yes. Mike Holmgren. <laughs> 
<laughs> David, while we're here, uh, I do have a uh, quick question about uh, merch Got and the merch store. Old and white. Uh, we talk a lot about NIL around here, name, image, and likeness, and players profiting off of their own name, image, and likeness. Um, and I was hoping to maybe get a couple of touche tache shirts for my family. Um, but I believe I have to pay for my own name and face on a shirt to be able to get shirts for my family Samson. and our last Samson. name. Is that the truth? Samson. Or can I get some free shirts of me? Samson, here's what's funny. I have known. Oh, for the love oh, of God. Geez. Here's what's funny about this, Samson. <laughs> I saw the other day that Skipper sent out an email that he thought was holiday generous. Saying yeah, that's right. All employees get 40% off of the merchandise. <laughs> and as I saw that email, I thought to myself, I know our group. Oh, They're yeah. going to be saying, where's the other 60% off? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, we that's were all a true story, it. Dan. You actually asked me to do a 100% discount to your employees, well, and there was no chance toilet pants that was going to happen. It's my 40%. name and my face, David. Toilet but it's pants. not. Without without Metalark and Levitard, you have no name or face. I don't have a name or face. I don't even have a contract here. <laughs> By the way, that's your own problem. <laughs> You have, you don't have a name or face with us. What in the world is that, David? What does that mean? What are you doing here? What are you here? talking about? <laughs> what I don't have a name or a face. When this Let me be court, very clear. So Without Metal Arc Media and the Dan Lebetard show with Stu Gotts, there is no one who cares about a touche tache shirt. Okay, David. Okay. This merch store doesn't have That's quite, insane. quite the soul that I wish for it to have when you're it's telling soulless. when you are telling people no it's you no know, it doesn't have a name a face or a soul like it it is a disembodied It's got 40% off though. <laughs> disembodied What greed, a cotton-headed greed, ninny muggins. Greed machine. What? Uh, go sit in the penalty box, Elf. It's an Elf reference. <laughs> yeah, I know. Son of a nutcracker. I, I know it's an Elf reference that yeah, he's that clearly one. reading right off his computer. Oh, man, I'm trying. He's not being... It's not coming out he, naturally. He's, he's, not, he's not being sent to the penalty box. Does this anyone... crazy. Does anyone care shirt. about this t-shirt besides us? This just feels like us no. looking into a mirror. Yeah. I mean, that's what the show has been for 20 years. <laughs> that's Na true. Naval gazing? <laughs> yeah, you that's true. No neighbor. <laughs> Sorry. Lebitardaf.com. I is, learned David birthed Jeremy today. Is where you go. All right, put David Sampson away. I need the distractions to stop here. Right. If you want anything for the holidays, I don't know, actually, now that I've put him away, whether Samson Sucks 20 as a discount code still gets you 20% off or not. Yes, it does. <laughs> get out of here. How do you just turn him down? How do you how do you turn him down and get him out of here? It works when we I'm don't want it to work. Leaving. Uh, Billy, what is factual about I... Tommy DeVito and his agent? The marketing part is now eliminated. He's been fired. Uh, is it Sean Stiletto is the name of his agent? The guy who dressed as a leprechaun in all green or an elf at last Sunday's game when they lost 24 to 6. The guy uh, who is at the middle of the kerfuffle with the New Jersey pizzeria that Stu got says, hey, man, yesterday's price is not today's price. Whatever it is you agreed to, Tommy DeVito is more famous. What's true about the relationship with the agent? Well, his name's Sean Stilato, not Stiletto. He wasn't dressed like an elf. He was wearing his Hall of Fame jacket. He was and dressed like an elf. Fame, yeah. No, he was wearing and, – and he, you know, there was an incident at a pizzeria, and it seems like Tommy made good, and he sat down, and he met with the pizzeria owner. He had an agreement, and they got – after Monday Night Football, they wanted to double the price of the appearance fee. And, you know, the owner obviously didn't like that, but he's made good on that. And it seems as though Tommy has since hired someone else to manage the PR. But he still has retained his agent for football things. I don't know what to do with that if I am Stilato. If you, you need to dial it back a little. If you're well, stilato. no, you don't. He's doing his job. I mean, that's well, what but, he was but doing. But his just... job isn't usually to be quite this look at me. Like, your agent doesn't get famous off of your fumes because of how he's dressing. Not a lot of other agents are doing it that way. If you're if you're a client, you want your agent to be a little more in the shadows, I think. He made negative news about him. Like, that was, I, based off the way he did it, that was his agent's thing of, like, let's double this price. Hey, we got to strike. His agent was you. 
right. to the pizza place. I understand and then that. And I made him a bunch of bad PR, so he's like, I got I to gotta switch this. There was never a signed agreement, so that's on the pizza shop for not having a signed agreement with Tommy DeVito and Sean Stellato, okay? That's on them. All this guy is doing for Tommy is what he should be doing for Tommy. Hey, your profile has risen over the last few weeks. I want to get you more money before it goes back down the other way. But you have to look ahead on these things. How will this look? Yes, it's easy just to under the table be like, hey, I want double the price. But if that makes news, that's a bad look. You stop being the lovable underdog, Stugatz, when what your agent has now done for you is you're arguing with a mom and pop pizza shop on greed. Like, it's not worth whatever. Whatever you were going to make in double, you just cost yourself because that all everything that just happened there where you're being right. let go is something that looks bad for your client. And your job is to make sure, however it is that you can, that you're not the reason that your client looks bad on anything. But it also looks looks bad to get rid of a guy or at least get rid of some of his responsibilities of a guy who has stood by your side when maybe not a ton of agents would be willing to stand by your side because you're Tommy DeVito. I don't understand what you're doing there. I mean, he's Tommy DeVito's agent, okay? And this guy is loyal to Tommy DeVito. And suddenly Tommy DeVito has success and the agent's trying to do what an agent should do. And Tommy DeVito is saying no. I don't want that. I don't want more money. Get out of he my life. He doesn't want the bad press, Dugats. You realize that we are talking about a minuscule transaction that has turned into symbolic greed from the newcomer who becomes less of an underdog. And you don't have to agree with it. I understand that you're going to be pro greed at all turns, but it would appear that Tommy DeVito says no thank you to whatever it is that feels like because he doesn't want to be represented in public looking like he's that greedy that as soon as he gets to fame, he's going to strong arm a local pizzeria. And so he's the one deciding, according to what Billy's telling me here, to eliminate the marketing arm because of what just happened in that instance, which is the agent and Tommy DeVito, DeVito falling in a pothole. Whatever the negative press is, is absolutely costing them more in optics than what the doubled appearance fee was going to get them. We're talking about 10K here. It was originally 10K, and right. they made it 20K. And he's signing autographs, right? There was no signed contract. So the agent saying, hey, yesterday it was 10K, now it's 20K for the same exact deal. I'm okay with that if I'm Tommy DeVito. Pizzeria's got some bread. 10K yeah. for an appearance I mean, is nice. Yeah. Did you do that on purpose? Ah. Some dough. They broke bread. Him and Tommy DeVito and the pizza owner, you know, broke bread, figured it Some out. Some dough. Pizza. And he did it for free. How is he still here? Area. How is he still here? How? Are, okay, Samson, since you're still here, let's get your opinion on what it is that we're talking about there. Because you don't, your, your distaste for Scott Boris is legendary. There is no one you skewer more than Scott Boris. What is your take on what it is that we're talking about? Well, it cost Tommy 10 grand, but the thing that you have to focus on is Tommy had a marketing guy before. This is not a new thing. We got some bad information out there, but I did some searching because I couldn't believe that DeVito would allow this to happen, this level of greed, because it's penny wise and pound foolish. So he cost himself, he did the appearance for free, and the marketing people were stomped on by this agent who you gave a platform to, who was at 14 and a half minutes and counting, and if DeVito ends up making it, which is unlikely, but if he does, he's going to need new representation. David, uh, since apparently I don't have a name or face without this platform, I've decided I'm going to start an NIL collective. Uh, so we're going to get a GoFundMe going. It'll oh, be wow. on my Twitter. So if everyone wants to go donate to that so that I can afford to buy a shirt with my own name and face on it. <laughs> Good so luck. Go to, go to at Jeremy Taché on Twitter you and you'll find it. Money. You're I am asking for money because apparently I can't get free T-shirts of my own face. You should be asking for a contract. I probably should. <laughs> Samson, I'm not going to get that at this point, though. Group. Com. I don't best baseball and best sports business podcast. Lebetardaf.com. Why are you so angry? You sound you sound like you're spitting the promotions at us. <laughs> sound, I'm doing reads. That's is, how we make money. This is not the holiday spirit. You just erase both the soul of the merch store and the face of Jeremy Taché, who has job who has a job outside of this one. Yeah, that's right. And has a face outside of the one that's publicly facing here. Mm -hmm. You've eliminated any of his features. I would have appreciated just a thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> For what? Thank you. 
See Say you, thank you, Jeremy. See you later, Samson. <laughs> Lebitardaf.com. The 20% off code is Samson sucks and the number 20. <laughs> Stugatz, I am sure at this point that uh, many people listening to this are tired of me lamenting whatever, but mostly <laughs> lamenting that the last couple of years of trying to do it ourselves has been hard. You can hear it in the David Sampson audio glitches, and I was just told that Tony is now prepared to do his top five. But as I listened in cue to Tony <laughs> not going to the most creative of places here in Mail It In Week, where I thought he'd be all over Miami giving us top fives. Instead, he just wandered, sauntered over to the room next door, which also the audio doesn't work on. He's six feet away from us. That's correct. <laughs> but I was told the audio wasn't working and he sounded sort of intergalactic and it was but this is while all of you are in my ear all the time about how badly you want to go to the Super Bowl. And I've been told that if we go to the Super Bowl, it's one technical person. I'm sorry. Every person who goes from a microphone talking standpoint needs two technical people with them to go to Las Vegas. Ours is a giant show. All of this seems like it would be really expensive. It's got to be planned. We're planning on the Dolphins being in the Super Bowl, in which case we'd want to be there, but the Dolphins can be the seven seed in three weeks if uh, football footballs. Right, so that's why the T-shirts were $40, huh? Cover the cost. I, I mean, two for one. Every guy who speaks into a mic needs two tech people. That's not going to be paid for by T-shirts. I think you have <laughs> Vegas being a lot cheaper than it is. And I've heard whispers about what your expense accounts look like oh. every time that you leave town, how you crush a mini bar. <laughs> I love a good mini bar. I do. I mean, listen, it's hard when it's your own money. But when it's yours, oh, that mini bar but, gets a lot easier to but, open. But the problem is it is all our money. Oh. It is because we all own the company. I don't know why I'll you stop doing it. Why, I don't know why you behave in the self-destructive fashion of thinking you're not impairing your own value to the company. And you're, I, I, it's, it's really confusing to me that you don't understand this part of ownership. That when I travel, I open that mini bar, the money I'm spending is mine? Is that what you're saying? You are diminishing the value. But more of it is yours. I mean, I mean but that makes it easier to open the mini bar. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay. Well, I, I've heard you in Vegas is a bad idea. Yeah. Just generally a bad idea. Agreed. That's not going to be anything that's responsible. Yeah. But uh, I'm told Tony's sound is not working or is working, uh, so I don't trust it. But we're going to try it anyway. Uh, thank you, Tony, for giving so much thought to your top five on a Wednesday and where it would be that you just wandered over to the next room to do it. Uh, do we have any OLI? Give him his music, please. <laughs> Hey, Dano, listen, this is this is very thought out, very precise. I wanted to do this for a very particular reason, because we're getting close to the Super Bowl. We're hoping to go. We want to go. And I want to show you I was born to be a drive time radio host. So what I want to do here is just kind of do a little crosstalk with you guys and make it seem like the good old days where you would crosstalk with Joe Rose or whoever it was. I don't, do I don't you want to do it with Billy? He's shaking his head right now and not supporting anything There's that's so happening much waste here. In this company. <laughs> so much waste. I'm actually doing us a favor. The live view that we go out with is very expensive. So I'm actually saving us money. Sorry about that. I don't think we ever crosstalk with Joe Rose. He was doing mornings. We were doing afternoons. That would have been But he's weird. just talking about right. classic crosstalk. Exactly. Where you hand a show Neil over Hank, yeah. to the next show. Uh, you want to do it with Billy? Who do you want to do it with? I remember you guys doing crosstalk one time with Boog when there was like a hurricane and there was no power remember was at tamiami park waiting in line to get ice and you guys just did crosstalk with boog for like three hours because no one had power so no one wanted to go home so you guys just did like multiple shows together were you working on the show then or were you just a listener because i was an ice point. procurer at the moment <laughs> waiting to get ice for my house that had no power yeah but were you somebody no, who, as a I, listener at the moment oh yeah. so you weren't you weren't employed this is something that i was you employed remember. not here though you said i want to make a career of that i'm listening to crosstalk between boog dan and stugatz that's what i want to do for a livelihood i thought it was cool i also thought it felt very different than whatever this is about to be okay what's so, that supposed to mean uh, so this was were you an fiu student at the time yeah, or pause up had you recently graduated no 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 
Would you like to do the crosstalk with Tony, or does uh, would you prefer that he do it with us? I'd prefer that he was out on an island by himself and floated away, and we never saw him again. But <laughs> it's harsh, man. It's <laughs> what a loser. Holiday season. Wow. Okay. OLI. <laughs> Chargers. Ben Johnson. Collision course. Unless it's Bill Belichick, then it's Bill Belichick and the Chargers. Uh-huh, Collision uh-huh. course. That job's right for the take and Stugatz. That's not observation. I have no idea what he's doing. But it is pretty funny that uh, last week there was a report that Belichick, it's already been determined, is going to be fired at the end of the season, and we didn't talk about it. Like, that's a <laughs> bit strange. I want to talk about how many teams would fire their head coach to get Bill Belichick. I do. That's okay. coming up next segment, number five. I want to see how far I can push it out. All right, let's yeah. see. We'll okay. try that next segment. Go ahead, Tony. Dak is rounding into perfect December form. That was bad. Watching that one against Buffalo, it's. Uh, I feel like we have seen how Detroit gets eliminated, how Dallas gets eliminated, how the Dolphins get eliminated. I think we have seen the games play out where we're like, okay, that's going to look familiar in a month. Uh, go ahead, Tony, number four. Number four. Dano, you were all over this one a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week. Baker Mayfield and Matthew Stafford quietly having really nice seasons. It does help, though, when all the other quarterbacks are hurt and you can just throw (laughs) Flacco out there and Baker Mayfield, and by comparison, they look great. Why? Because Drew Locke is out there playing. Winner. Winner, by the way. He looks good on that drive. He did. Really good. Stafford had a throw where he was backing up, backpedaling, back foot, uh, threw it like 30 yards on a line to an out route of like Tyler Higby or somebody that he, like, Toe, toe drag swagged out. It was a beautiful throw. Well, Stafford I, still got it. I don't believe that we have covered well or enough the idea that in a Super Bowl, Matthew Stafford felt comfortable enough with Cooper Cup as his only receiving option to throw him a no-look pass on a game-winning drive. It's I, I've heard for 30 years the story of, of uh, Joe Montana coming into the huddle and telling his people 90 yards from the game-winning score, hey, look, John Candy is in the stands, and that was Joe Cool being the coolest. Yep. Throwing no-look passes on game-winning drives? I don't believe – I believe that by itself should put Stafford in the Hall of Fame. Go ahead, Tony. Ag- agreed. Number three, Purdy all but locked up the MVP this weekend, but a heady locker room play from the savvy vet saying it should be CMC who gets the MVP, not himself. That's a heady play from a guy who knows what he's doing. But he's not a vet. It's a savvy vet move, though, Dan. That's the that's the point. It is. Uh, he's playing like he's already played ten years in the NFL. Right. Like he, he's amazing. Well, I don't know how. I don't know why. Well, I know why. He's got a lot of players around him, but he's playing excellently, and he's saying all the right things, and he's doing all the right things, and it's a heady play. Give it to CMC. I don't want the MVP. I'll have it next year. We'll give it to CMC. He's having an incredible season. We'll do it that way. He earns all the locker room respect right there on, on that move. I mean, Tony's right. You lie in that situation. Yeah. Purdy knows he wants it, knows he deserves it, but yeah, you know, you give it to a teammate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Leadership. Exactly. Just Maybe like Trevor best. Lawrence walking to the uh, to the locker room after spraining an ankle. ankle. Leadership. Yep. Don't take the cart. Walk. Mm-hmm. Why does he have the same numbers as Daniel Jones for his career? A lot of people have pointed that out. Trevor Lawrence and Daniel Jones look awfully similar. No Trevor one, Lawrence, kind no, of a bum. No one's – wow. Are kind you of, out? Kind are, of a bum. Are you out? That I'm means, not out. That means you're out. One, that, one foot out the door. That I'm, means you're out. You one foot out the door. You can't call a bum and say you're He's not a out bum. on them. You're out on Jackson. He's got a bum leg. Point. He's got a bum leg. That's not what you were saying. Tony, when you reach bum status, you are done with that quarterback. <laughs> yes. I'm kind of done with Trevor Lawrence. Okay, well, then you're done with Jacksonville and your whole – I'm not done with Jacksonville. There's still something there, but I'm worried about Trevor Lawrence long term. There can't be something there. You can't be out on their quarterback and say there's something there on their team you've got inconsistent opinions in this crosstalk you are made for sports radio nothing you say is consistent number two number two the lions are back on track dark that horse sounded dark like horse for the nfc us? that sounded like a question mark. it is a question mark <laughs> lions are back on track dot 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 dark horse just throwing it out there. Eagles all of a sudden don't look that good. Mm. Cowboys don't look that good. Right. Some things break the right way all of a sudden. Who are you betting if Detroit goes to Philadelphia? Philly big. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you betting if Philly goes to Detroit? 
Philly big. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but if they don't go to Detroit, all of a sudden Detroit gets, you know, a different path, has to play, you know, the Bucks or whoever, even though <laughs> okay. Baker Mayfield looks good. Okay. If they if they end up with, with San Francisco in an N- NFC championship game, I'm going to bet the 49ers, but in the back of my mind, I'm going to be like, look, Jared Goff has made it to one of these before. Brock Purdy hasn't. Remember, he was in there for like five minutes, got his arm torn out the socket. Billy, why is your head in your hand? I just, I miss Boog, honestly. <laughs> number one. Number one. Don't look now, but no one is circling the wagons. Better than the Buffalo Bills at the moment. Scary team. Josh Allen. Yeah. Terrifying. James Cook. Defense that was hurt, now getting a little bit healthier. Beating Dallas. Obviously, we know what happened with, with the Kansas City Chiefs. We're not going to get there. Chris is very upset. I'm upset, too. Did you? By the way, did you see Kadarius Toney let up a mind-boggling interception last week, too? Yeah, another one went through his hands and ended up being an interception. <laughs> <laughs> he's so bad. Oh, he's so good, though. That's the problem. He's such an elite athlete, and he's just making plays that are not good for his team. Anyways, Buffalo Bills, keep an eye on Keep an eye out for them. We got it. Because they're circling the wagons right now at the right time, boys. Uh, Mikey A. asked a great question on God Bless Football. Is Kadarius Tony a great athlete who's just bad at football? <laughs> <laughs> he, he has some uh, some drops that end up being interceptions. I would be very frustrated with him if I were uh, the Kansas City Chiefs who uh, are looking for someone to replace uh, Tyreek Hill and Eric Bieniemy and uh, those receivers are not good enough. But Stugatz, I wanted to ask you something based on the Monday night game, I was surprised this happened to me. I was moved by the relationship between Geno Smith and Drew Locke. The fact that Geno Smith was on the sidelines and very clearly happy in the middle of that noise that Drew Locke was able to do something in his stead. Uh, Let's uh, let's hear some of this sound from the post-game interview where Drew Locke is clearly emotional, but this friendship is real, and it was really cool to see these two share at, uh, you know, under some adversity to share that they love each other. And that was it. All right. Excellent. I can't wait to go to the Super Bowl. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Stugatz, there is so much pressure in-house Everyone wants to go to Vegas for the Super Bowl. (laughs) And based on that segment, which, again, I will tell you, Tony was just in a room next door. That should have been as easy a transaction as there is. (laughs) That's just – that is in football, that is uh, taking the snap from center. Yeah. And we cannot execute something very simple – Easily. I don't know. Tua's had a hard time this season with that. I was actually just going to say, we're like Connor Williams, the Dolphins center, even though he's out for the year. Not a compliment. Mm -hmm. We can't snap the ball, but once we do, we're dangerous. (laughs) This is what I'm going to say, though. You know what? I overstated it. That, what we just did, was so 101 that it's simply breaking the huddle. It's not even (laughs) executing anything with the ball. It's just getting from the huddle to the ball without everyone colliding into each other and the clap being at the wrong time. Uh, I don't have faith in us being able to execute something from Las Vegas when you guys are all going to be partying. I'm going to look up and somebody's going to be stumbling in at 5 o'clock in the morning because there's just a general irresponsibility around here. It sounds like maybe four tech guys for everyone on a microphone sounds like the right number. I mean... The idea that we have to have two tech guys for every microphone and everyone here wants to go and be at a microphone, you have confidence? Does anyone here have confidence in our ability to execute that? Because the problem is we have to start planning now, Stugatz. If I want to be there if the Dolphins are in the Super Bowl. Right. But what is our confidence level right now? in the Dolphins being in the Super Bowl, especially if they have to do road games. Because if you're 10 and 4, Stugatz, you're supposed to be one of the best teams in the league. I've enjoyed well, they are. I I've mean. enjoyed watching hard knocks. Yes, they are, Stugatz. But like Dallas, there's just a whole bunch of people that are pointing at the Dolphins and saying, yeah, good. 
but not good enough to actually win all the games until the end. Like, everyone will acknowledge, yes, the Dolphins are good, but I rarely see these kinds of questions around teams like Dallas and Miami heading into this kind of game late in the season. You don't have these games. Stugatz, you just said possible Super Bowl preview. These questions do not exist in the San Francisco-Baltimore game. They just don't. Dallas, Miami has more questions about are those teams actually good than Baltimore, San Francisco does. Well, it's funny because Dallas, they were great. They were the best team in the NFL after they beat Philadelphia, went to Buffalo, got blown out. They're no longer the best team in the NFL. That's just the way it works uh, in the but, NFL. But, but I not, think all those teams have question marks. The fan. only team that doesn't is probably yeah. the 49ers. No, the 49ers like, do. Like, Brock Purdy needs to do it in the playoffs. Yeah, but the 49ers are the one consensus that everyone's like, this is a great team. The Ravens, to less of an extent, right? Like, people feel confident in the Ravens, but there's also the whole, like, but do it in the playoffs because we haven't really seen it in the playoffs yet. And then, like, everyone else, like, there's then that other tier that you can argue, which is the Eagles and the Cowboys are definitely in that tier. Ask Eagles fans. They think their team's a bunch of frauds. If you ask the Eagles fans, they're not confident in the Eagles at all. Dolphins are in that the tier. The Dolphins may be in that tier or maybe yeah. right underneath that tier. But, like, the Cowboys, Dolphins, and Eagles right now are kind of all in that same question mark thing. Jim, and here's the thing. You said that this weekend's game between the Cowboys and the Dolphins is a potential Super Bowl preview. I think that whoever wins that game will still get the question mark like but that other team is kind of fluky so I don't know beat an actual good contender Jim Nance said during the broadcast the other day I could see this team in Vegas and <laughs> that's all I needed to hear <laughs> the thing that I would say yes, to against you the Jets is different about Baltimore and San Francisco's to guys because I know it's not just the playoffs it's that Baltimore has three losses against teams they've got they lose in the division they've got three losses against teams that aren't the elite teams in the sport they lost to the Colts then but even as we talk about the hyperventilation that goes week to week in the analysis where Dallas can beat Philadelphia and you're like, okay, they're one of the best, and then they go to Buffalo and you're like, what the hell was that? Buffalo, Baltimore, the Chiefs, and the 49ers, nobody drags them. When they lose, it's a surprise. Nobody beats them the way Dallas gets beaten by Buffalo. The way Buffalo beat Miami 48-20 right. doesn't happen to Buffalo. And so my measurement for these things is, yeah, you might have a bad loss. The Bills lost to the Jets. But do you ever get swamped in a way Dallas did when it went to San Francisco where you're like, oh, my God, that's exactly how they're going to lose in the playoff. They're going to go do a road game, and they're just not going to have the horses because they're going to lose by 35 points because that team is clearly better than them. I know Cincinnati did that to San Francisco, but nobody does that to healthy San Francisco. Right. Uh, it's a fair point on Buffalo. It's a fair point on on the really elite team. But on the was, Ravens. But well, it's no, not but relevant. No, like, but they Buffalo, could lose by a touchdown. Like, the Bills lose in the playoffs. It doesn't matter if they lose by a field goal or if they lose by 30. It's Once a loss, you lose, right? you're out. No, loss but my, my point on that is just you don't get hit with fraudy when you're always in the games. When no one ever sees you get swamped by anybody so they can't make the assessment. Look, what they just did to Dallas, Stugatz, from week to week, they did it because they're like, Oh, it's not just that Buffalo beat you. It's they manhandled you. Right. They dragged you. That the best teams, Stugatz, when the greatest show on turf lost to the Patriots in the Super Bowl, that team all year, no one could throttle them. Right. There was no such thing. If, if you beat them, you were fortunate to beat them because football happened to them, but not because you could beat them by three touchdowns. No, that's fair. Uh, the Bills' worst loss this year is a six-point loss. So, like, to Dan's point, yeah, they never get blown out. They're also, if the season ended today, a team that's not in the playoffs. That's so, right. <laughs> that's crazy. But the, well, Bills, the Bills game against the Bengals last year in the playoffs wasn't particularly close. That's true, yes, and it's why I was stunned by it. But still, yes, you can lose a playoff game one time. I'm just saying in your assessment, everyone is very willing to dismiss people as frauds. Like, I saw a lot of people doing it to Philadelphia just because they lost – in the most emotional fashion in a Seattle <laughs> game. I do want to get to the sound, Stugatz, because I don't have an investment in this. I have been making fun of the Seahawks since they had a quarterback competition between Drew Luck, Drew Luck and mm. Geno Smith. Right. When I when they started 
two years ago with that as their quarterback competition. I'm like, and that's the end of Pete Carroll, and that's the end of the Seahawks, and that's the end of whatever that dynasty was that they had. It's all over, and Seattle has been better than I thought they were for two years. But what happened at the end of that game where Seattle is going crazy and Drew Locke ends up making the throw at the end, Stugat, so that it produces this post-game interview that was exceptional with Lisa Salters because you rarely see the quarterback almost break down like this. And so what did it feel like to orchestrate this game-winning drive tonight? Oh, amazing won't do it justice. Amazing won't do it justice, but amazing also doesn't do justice with the O-line, what DK did on that catch, what the receivers did, what Ken Walker, Zach Charbonnet did all game long, the tight ends, man. It takes a special group to rally around a guy that you know has come into his second game of the year, right? Used to the same thing all year long, same cadence, same spin of the ball, everything. For a team like that, not just the offense, the defense to rally around me tonight, man, that was that was amazing. I see some I hear some emotion in your voice. Yeah. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Um, I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed. Blessed with a great group of guys, a great city, great coaching staff. It's just, it's, it's awesome. It's a wow. You hear all the time, Stu Gods, that Aaron Rodgers is a bad guy because he's not uh, mentoring his replacement. The thing that moved me is Seattle wins a game to sort of save its season, its playoff chances against uh, what we believe to be a good team. Seattle is in a frenzy, the emotion of it, after Drew Locke has made a 30-yard throw in the last 30 seconds of the game to win the game. The thing that made me emotional that surprised me is that Geno Smith is wearing over his face in the middle of that noise, he is wearing garb that covers his face to keep him warm. But he is nodding at Drew Locke with what is so obviously pride and happiness for him that I'm like, that's really cool that teammates would be able to share that when Geno Smith is the one who wants to be in that spot. Billy, what are you making faces about? Geno Smith's not good enough to be happy that his replacement's doing so well. <laughs> yeah, but he got paid, Billy. Uh... Geno Smith is 33 years old, and he thought he was going to be a backup forever. He got his opportunity. So I ima- he's a journeyman quarterback. Yeah. So I imagine he's happy for anyone in that situation, yeah. even his own teammate. Why? You think Geno's running the risk of losing his job? Football contracts are funny, and money disappears. <laughs> Appears all the time. Okay. I'm just saying. Right. If I'm Gino, I'm not super duper happy. I'm, I'm confused what the emotion is, though. Like, this is just a backup playing for a starter. Like, I don't hear Eichenberg getting emotional for the Dolphins when he fills in for Connor Williams at center. Like, it's, but it's just, I just, it's a little. I just, I don't see the emotion in this. Like, this is just a guy. He got an opportunity. This guy wants Geno Smith to get hurt. Now I realize why Billy never applauds me or never gives me any flowers when I do a good top five. When I do anything good, Billy's never there to help me. He's not Geno Smith. This would be like if I walked out after a show where I'm filling in for my grind and I started weeping out there. <laughs> it's just, you guys all helped me. It won't be today's show. <laughs> Dan, can we put that on the poll, please? Is Drew Locke rooting for Geno Smith to get hurt? <laughs> no, I, just, I feel bad I even said it. We don't have to put that one on the but poll. But this is really cool. Like, this is a guy who thought when he first came into the league that he was going to get a chance to be a starter. Yeah. Then felt like maybe he missed his opportunity, was going to be Chad Henney backing up for the rest of his life. And we've seen we, we've seen literally Seattle pay a Matt Flynn, who had one great game as a backup, just based off the projection. So now this is a ton of money that might eventually come into Drew Locke and his family. By the way, married to Lewis's second cousin. Hmm. So a lot of money for That's Lewis. True. Wow. Drew Locke word association will always just be the young Jeezy gif on the sideline of him rapping but to billy's point i guess you want him to act you want gino to act like joe burrow because joe burrow is not cheering on jake browning at no, all joe burrow's been super good to jake browning he know. gave him his sweet two weeks know. in a row for his family no, you shouldn't do that here is why billy is wrong about his assessment of well, gino and smith and drew Locke. that's no fun that's not how we do it in this business wait and see <laughs> is uh, david samson's if gino smith gets released you're hashtag. all gonna look at me like hmm well this is where this is where, though, Geno Smith can be happy behind the garb he was wearing over his face. He knows Drew Locke's not any good. We all do. He just had a moment. We all do. We've seen enough there.
Gino is not threatened in any meaningful way. We thought that about Gino Smith in his defense. Uh, yes, but I've seen Drew Locke play for that team, and he doesn't look like Gino Smith. <laughs> you just went from the cool parts of the emotions That's right. to That's right. on Drew Locke That's within, right. what, three minutes? That's right. That's what I did. That's yeah. correct. Way to go, Billy. That is exactly what happened. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's a lot easier to love Drew Locke when you don't have to worry about him actually taking your job. This would be like Jeremy weeping after like filling in for Kelly Sacco on the heat sideline. I, side would. I, He's I like, Guys, yeah, thank you. I just... I get an opportunity. It's a, it's a great Jeremy's point. Weird. No, but it's a great point. I cannot believe that Billy turned you that quickly, Dan. <laughs> Billy, of all people. <laughs> well, because he's he's sitting here saying that he, he's right, generally. The jobs are pretty interchangeable in that sport, except when Drew Locke wants yours. He's not going to get it. I can't weep if I don't have a name or a face. Someone writes in, Stugatz, I love the pod, but it seems like they barely talk sports anymore. The local hour is usually ruled by Mike Ryan booster talk. Amin and Charlotte rarely talk actual hoops when in studio, just NBA gossip and headlines. Dan is super into politics, which is fine, but it just seems like there's been a shift. I'm not super into politics. Hmm. A lot of people are complaining that we're talking way too much sports. I don't know how it can be both of those things, how it could be too little sports and too much sports, but it's been both of those things as a complaint the entire time we've been doing this. You can't please everyone, Dan. Just keep talking. Uh, yes, I've been talking too much, uh, but when you mention the idea that we talk too much politics around here, Many in our audience have noticed what they feel to be a dissolution of our relationship with Aaron Rodgers, that the relationship has changed and the way that we talk about him has changed. I have been in agreement with him on a number of different things and in disagreement with him on a number of different things. But right now what's happening with Aaron Rodgers is some people here today we're calling him a loser. Now, I don't believe that for one second. He still remains. I'm not going to diminish the excellence at the position. Before Mahomes, he's the best I'd ever seen. And I'm including Brady in there. I know Brady won more, but just watching the artistry of quarterback. Yes, we could do it game by game, lost big games. And I wouldn't have a very good argument in saying that Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback than Tom Brady. I would lose that argument. But just watching someone play. He's been amazing. But what's happened in New York this year where he's been a spectacle of not playing and now yesterday, finally, it was like, never mind, I'm not actually playing this year. Well, the team's out of it. so Yeah, but all year it was to get back and defy science and Fauci's an idiot. And, and we know... We know that he and I do not align here, but there is plenty of room for disagreement and plenty of room for people to raise their hand, including me, on I was wrong about certain things here because I was trusting science. And I understand if you're someone who doesn't trust science, but we were in a fairly unknown time. And if you line up against me on that, totally understood. My general relationship to what it is Aaron Rodgers is doing is not poisoned by Aaron Rodgers doing some things differently than I expected as he headed into midlife as an adult and into end of life as a quarterback and a quarterback career. My assessment of him case to case on things that happened isn't poisoned by the last two or three years of him behaving differently or having different opinions than me. Like, I'm not arriving at everything Aaron Rodgers related and saying anything in the realm of loser. Like, I don't know how it is that you guys are ending up there. How did you end up at loser? Uh, because he's acting like a big loser, Dan. Oh, that's <laughs> Good point. I mean, Counterpoint. I, I, Bishop look, look, he is maybe my favorite quarterback I've ever watched play the game. I'm not saying feels like that, there's a butt coming. Well, yeah, I'm not saying we're no, no, no. I'll here. tell you a big butt. I'm not saying Guys, you can say whatever you want. He's never coming on this show again. Yeah, is that right? That's not true. I don't think he's it's coming not on this true. show again. No. Do not. you know something we don't, Dan? Well, you I said do. that's right. Like a very, you know. I'm asking, is that right? Because I don't know that to be true. And there are going to be very few words. Man, 
Do you remember that I was praying at a shrine in my house that we released a video with Aaron Rodgers the first time he disappointed us? Uh, I don't believe that my relationship with Aaron Rodgers is ruined, but it wasn't much of a relationship. It was just an on-air relationship. I can tell you, as the person who communicates with Rodgers' team and the Jets media relations staff, that Rodgers has no beef with you. He is happy to come back on this show once he is playing football again. Uh, I will also tell you that I've been angling for God bless football uh, for him to come on that show, and he's happy to do that as well. So there is no beef, I'm telling you, with Aaron Rodgers, with anyone on this show. There isn't. Are you sure that you weren't requesting Jake Owen? (laughs) You don't know whether you were requesting the right person or not. Because it would make sense, but also I don't believe that much of what is happening around here is getting to him, and most of what gets aggregated and associated to me is not something that I have said. It's just something one of you have said, so I'm sure that it's going to be a headline now, uh, Lebetard, Rogers is a loser. How about this, Lebetard, <laughs> Rogers is a winner. I like that. He oh. won this whole thing. Positive. Yes. He got yes. exactly everything right. that he wanted to get out of this. Yes. Just, right? attention. Yes. just like, attention. Mm-hmm. No, That's he it. won. He came back. He no, almost he didn't. made a miraculous comeback. He almost. didn't because the doctors didn't let him. Almost. But he's so a he month lost. away, and the rules really worked against him on this one because <laughs> he only had that 21-day window. And he told us he's about three or four weeks away from being 100%. Unfortunately, three or four weeks away from being 100%, falls outside of the 21-day window. Yeah. So, like, it's not his fault. If anything, you could say he was a great teammate over this period of time. He was there on the sidelines. A lot of times when people are there doing rehab, you don't see them forever. He's there with headsets on. People have said time after time he's a bad teammate. He doesn't want to mentor Jordan Love. He doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to do that. I mean, he seemed to take Zach Wilson under his wing. Yep. He was there every game trying to be supportive. You could see him rolling his eyes in disgust, but he never threw a hissy fit. He never really said much of anything after some of these games. He'd just appear every Tuesday on Pat McAfee, and he'd you know say whatever he'd say there. Yep. And then he'd just come back and be a good teammate. We heard from Rich Samini. He looked great last week. He jumped up, made a one-handed interception. I mean... I don't see how you can look at any of this and think that Aaron Rodgers lost in any way. He got hurt. He played four snaps of a season, but we've been talking about him the entire time. If anything, it sounds like he's going to come back stronger than he ever has been of before. Course. Everybody's everybody's praising how he's fixed science in a way. Like He has a whole different way of recovering from injuries. We thought that it was going to be a year or so to recover from this injury. Aaron showed us that it could be, you know, a couple of months, plus a 21-day window, plus three weeks after that. So, like, if anything, I don't see how you could say he lo- he was the big winner here. This is how you get a guess, Dan. I taught him well. So proud of you. <laughs> Just compromise all your principles. Say whatever needs yep. to be said at a microphone. So you that said you that, can not me. Request. Levitard, colon. All of the things I just said. <laughs> Levitard, uh, you could have sent it. That sentence should have ended earlier. Uh, by surrounding myself with you guys, it's just Levitard, colon. I just can't really take seriously who this guy has been throughout this season. You Not as a football take, player. Hold on. You can't take someone else seriously. Buddy yeah, the can't. Elf can't take this You're dressed seriously. as an elf. I am dressed as an elf. It's not my fault. Right. I don't have a name or a face. I have to be somebody else. Yeah. Look, the, I want to hear you out on this. Just make it short. The part that's... <laughs> the, can you? Can I? Can you? Billy really just spoke for four minutes. I, 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 but I, he can. His wrong Dan, facts. Your oh, preamble you was four him, minutes. Though. That's correct. <laughs> it, it, it is my show. <laughs> like, I, mean, <laughs> I... The part of this that is frustrating is not that he is a bad teammate, is not that he's bad at football, It's that he spent this entire year, as he has for years now, lying right to our faces about the status of his health. Chris Cody tried to clip that Dan out of there. So yeah, he did. He just be directed <laughs> at you, but he hasn't gotten good enough at being able to clip the songs before they embarrass you. Uh, go ahead and finish your point, Jeremy. What is? Uh, are you the only one? Does anyone here agree with you on this? Doesn't seem like it. I, Absolutely the, not. The frustration that I have just comes from, look, you have a major platform in so many different ways. He he lied to us about his vaccination status when it first came up and then said, well, I'm doing things differently. Yes, he lied. 
Like, we have to stop with questioning that. He, he lied lie. right to our faces when asked directly about he the status. He misled you. Didn't lie, though. It was okay. like play action. Is play action a lie? play action. That's is, a is, great is, question. That's a good question. That's you stuck it right in the gut and he pulled it out. Is play action a lie? Yeah. yeah. Levitard, I'm stuck on that now. Levitard colon. Is play action a lie? Yeah. He, uh, Awful he, announcing. Uh, write the article. What he actually did there was he changed his cadence. Like, yeah. He, 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 like tried to get you to jump. Yeah. Like 20? And he got us to jump. He and he continues touches. to get the New York media to jump at every single thing Blue that he says. 52. It's infuriating. Immunized. Blue 52. Encroachment. Put it, uh, put it on the poll at Levitard Show. Is play action an outright <laughs> lie or an omission of truth? A slight omission of truth. Because uh, he was trying. You are correct. And we seized on that because God almighty, it's the cover up is always worse than the crime. He just read the room, right? Yeah. He's just like, yeah. I didn't get vaxxed. I don't think I can say that. I don't want to deal with <laughs> with. I mean, what he's deal with it later. Look, I don't blame anyone right now anywhere in America or the world for being afraid of the angry mob being unpredictable. <laughs> Like that, that I'm not going to blame anyone for. But isn't it also part of it on us for caring anything about what Aaron Rodgers says? Of course, that's the whole point. And he's going so and we standing let up. ourselves no, but, down. But he's going on platforms and doing things that are actually bad. He's calling out Anthony Fauci years yes. later for doing the best that he can when people have threatened that guy's life. Like this isn't stuff to mess around with. And I get, I get it completely what? that that. I can't. You look like that. an elf. I know this is the problem. I saw myself in the camera. No, I can't do it. <laughs> it sounds like we're the losers and the liars. <laughs> I'm the loser. <laughs> I'm the loser. I'm the liar. I'll now get, get behind it. Now go. you just gave up. We're right. the losers. Like people. Well, I don't know about I, we. Look, society. Look at Jeremy right now. The idea of Jeremy getting the high ground morally. As he calls an MVP of football a loser while dressed as an elf. It's football, man. Who cares? <laughs> you're taking it way too seriously. A nameless elf. The GoFundMe is going really well. You're guys. getting, you're getting <laughs> lots of donations this for me to get ridiculous. the touche attaché. <laughs> Dozens of what dollars. What does it cost to change your identity? You uh, should do it for the show. Change your name. <laughs> what are we going to change it to? Jeremy Touche. There we go. Uh, thank you, Billy, for throwing us to the end of a segment <laughs> with just total so dead fish. <laughs> After spending much of this century, Stugat, watching Bill Belichick and the Patriots dominate the AFC East in a way that was a cheat code to the Super Bowl, making Tom Brady the greatest winner of our time, somehow supplanting Michael Jordan in just improbability of winning when you're not supposed to have such a disproportionate impact on the result in football as you do in basketball. Michael Jordan, the best player in the world, best player in the universe, of course he's going to win. There are five players on the court at any time. Football is super weird, super random, one-game samples. The measurement system is screwed up. But we've had the knowledge for 25 years that Bill Belichick is good at what he does. This has been without dilution. Last week, there was a report not even covered by this show that Bill Belichick is going to be fired at the end of the year. Jay Glazer has told us that there would not be a line of suitors for Bill Belichick if he became available. This was, this was two months ago Jay Glazer was saying this, that this is not the next evolution of the young coach that the damage done over the last couple of years to Belichick's reputation is real. And now Stu Gotts is saying, as he did earlier in the show, how many teams would fire their coach right now if Bill Belichick was available? Because at one time, the answer to that was all of them. <laughs> at, at one point in our lifetimes, and it wasn't that long ago, it was a couple of years ago, all of us would say, Belichick is an upgrade over whoever your coach is. And trust me when I say this, Andy Reid was not in that conversation. <laughs> Andy Reid needed his modern Brady to make an appearance before Andy Reid made an appearance as this guy's one of the best. We spent a lot of time questioning, not people in football who knew how ahead he was on scheming and everything else, but there were a lot of people publicly questioning the greatness of Andy Reid until Mahomes became Mahomes. I think Reid might be the only safe coach in the game I'm about to play with you, but to your point, okay, to your point, 
I believe that Belichick was such a hot commodity, was considered the greatest coach of all time, that even after the Giants beat them twice in the Super Bowl, if you called the Giants the next day and said, hey, get rid of Tom Coughlin because Bill Belichick's coming to town, the Giants would have done so. I mean, do but you you're agree? Saying, you're saying Andy Reid right now? I think there are He's a lot. Safe. He's safe. No, but I think there are a lot who are nah, safe. No, I'm not so certain. I don't think the Dolphins would want Belichick right now. If, Bill, if the Dolphins get bounced out in the first round of the playoffs and Bill picks up the phone and he calls Stephen Ross and says, I want to be your coach. You're crazy. Wait a minute. You're saying weeks from I'm, now. I'm, I'm saying crazy. right now. I'm saying the phone call is being made today. You're saying if the season ended today, Dan? Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> two games now. You got to let the season play out, though, for this game to work. Stigots. Like, if you want to do it season ended today, I'll do it that way. But what if the Dolphins go on to win the Super Bowl? Then they would not fire Mike McDaniel. But other what are you than, doing? Other than Kyle Shanahan, Mike McDaniel's offense is, like, the best. In the league. The best. Like, in Chris, terms of an offensive mind that other Chris, teams would want. hear me out. Okay. Dolphins go to the playoffs, lose their first playoff game, get blown out. Belichick picks up the phone, calls Stephen Ross, and says, I want to be your coach. What is Stephen Ross doing? No, thank you. Are you kidding me? Maybe defensive coordinator. Are you kidding me? (laughs) That's insulting. I I couldn't even say that. (laughs) I have a team that would right now fire their coach, leading their division, would fire him right now to get Bill Belichick. Yeah, the Bucks. (laughs) <laughs> or the Saints because they're tied at 7-7 seven seven. The Dallas Cowboys There you go Jerry Jones you would go. fire Mike McCarthy yep. in one second yes. To make Bill Belichick the coach today That's tremendous now, You're what so if, right, a 10-4 and four. Right, what if McCarthy wins the Super Bowl though? No, but we're playing today though Still Okay, happen. today You're playing Still the wrong game right. Right. Why are you, Well, it's you, my game, you guys have changed the game no, I wanted the season no, to play out You're doing your, it as no, if the season ended it's today It's your game and you're changing your game Well, I'm not well, but you're giving us hypothetical examples about who would replace their coach well, with a disastrous finish. It, it is, Dan. Yes. It, also, it, you guys think Jerry Jones is the guy that's going to bring in the big egoed coach? Uh, that coach, yes. That coach, I'm yes. I'm not sure. I'm with Billy on this. Jerry Jones uh, prefers a puppet. He does not want somebody he who had wants more, there. more power. It is interesting to hear the way Mike McDaniel talks to his players on hard knocks. Like right. He calls two a bro. Right. And it was, I was watching last night, and I'm just thinking, it was the first time it really set in with me, like, oh, wow, like, we're talking generations here. Like, they, he is relating yeah. to these players. Like, Belichick's not calling Mac Jones bro. Yeah, no. Let me try this one. Belichick calls the Bills and says, hey, I want to be your head coach. Do they get rid of Sean McDermott? Because I believe they would. I do. And I think that's where Belichick should go because you want to apply maximum pain to the Patriots on the way out. You do. Should we play it this way? I have seven teams written right here that I don't think would take Belichick. Wow. Wait, no, it's a different game. I mean, it's the same game. It's the same game. You want me to give them to you? Sure. The Dolphins, the Ravens, the Steelers. I need the results, though. You guys are crazy doing it this way. That's so small. You want a three-game sample size to really make this decision. Well, no. if Dan Campbell gets knocked out in the first round of the playoffs and Belichick calls the Lions and says, I want to be your head coach, I'm assuming Stugans, the Lions say yes. The Lions were on my Stugans, list. not everyone who runs a business does so in the non-leadership fashion of whatever happened in one game is telling me what I'm doing for the next 10 years. <laughs> Not everyone does it that way. I understand But why this is it... Belichick. Okay, but let's just, let's please, for just a second, okay. imagine the scenario that you're describing because as you play this ridiculous and fun game, I can't believe that it's December of 2023 and I'm <laughs> playing this stupid game about Bill Belichick. I'm so proud like of you. Like the person that we're talking about. But no, it's not the game. I, I'm, not, I'm not enjoying the game that oh. you want to play. So, I'm enjoying right. the absurdity of what does someone have to do to be enduringly great in this market space for people not to do the stupidity of Dan I'm not asking this question now. I'm asking this question after you've had a disaster of a result at the end. Do you still want Belichick? I'm saying right now, Stugatz, from the position of whatever it is that Belichick is, 2-11 and 11 or what have they done? They're one of the worst teams in the league. They are. 3-11. Yeah. How much Six rings. has his value actually been diminished that if that phone call is being made today, and you are seeing in this division, Stugatz, at the top of it, there is a coach in the Dolphins 
who is clearly better at offense, like obviously better at the coaching of offense right. than what it is that the Patriots have. I'm wondering how much Bill Belichick has actually diminished his value when we can combine Jay Glazer saying there's not a line out the door for this person with what Chris Cody is pointing out. Brian Flores did not work with Tua doing it the Belichick way. Right now, what's happening in Foxborough must be the bleakest of gray experiences going to work in the morning for Bill Belichick when you know your team's ass. And Jabril Peppers has had to say out loud, you're lucky, we ass, and then had to apologize to Bill Belichick's face when that became a viral <laughs> moment because he is saying that the Patriot way is now a dead end toward ass crack. That, that the Patriot way ends in the cul-de-sac of there is someone's ass and we're inside it and it's gray and bleak and cold and also you don't reach today's generation of players with that style. Better for a coach to be more of an administrative assistant, a helpful supporter, an ally, human resources. It's a weird thing to say, but that style is going to work well, work better with young people than military discipline. You're saying the style of just throw down your rings, that doesn't work anymore? Riley did it for LeBron James. It worked there. I, I mean, think this mm -hmm. Belichick conversation is really just having amongst like podcast hosts and other teams. I actually think that Patriots fans – have perspective on this. Mm -hmm. A lot of Patriots fans I talk to are like, Bill can do whatever the hell he wants. I think the people that are really emotional about this do have what you think Bill Belichick deserves. I think this is more reporters, people who don't care about the Patriots, who are looking for the juicy headline of, ooh, Belichick's on the way out. Oh, but you're saying that, and yet the report is he is on the way out, and Jay Glazer, who knows it, is telling it not a line of people like that. Re that represents. Jesus. That's not just fans emotional talking or not talking. That I wouldn't assume that a Patriot fan base has perspective. I'm sure they're spoiled and used to winning. There might not be a line today, but there could be a line, right? Yeah. Could it After just be? Yeah. Season. Could it yeah. just be people yeah. want to be around happy people? And you're just like, no. Who's my next coach? That guy seems pretty miserable. I don't right. think that's how they're making. But he's great decisions. at winning, you know. Is so he what? Though? what not the, without Brady. What are these lists? Chris has a list of people that definitely wouldn't take him, and Stu guys has a list of people that would. So the Bengals get knocked out first round to the playoffs. If Belichick calls the Bengals, Zach Taylor might be the coach of the year getting to the playoffs with Jake Browning. Okay, He is not on my list. I'm with you on that. I think he, the Bengals could the, be an, an option. For the Belichick. Bengals could be an option, right, because wow. Belichick needs to choose wisely here. Yeah. This is a big decision Legacy. for Bill Belichick. You're mm -hmm. right. It's got to be the, the Chargers. Like that's where he's. Well, that end would be up. the obvious and easy one, yeah. right? But we keep hearing the Commanders, which seems ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So he's not going back to Cleveland. That, that would be an interesting Stefanski's one. Stefanski's done a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Stefanski has his team in the playoffs. Yeah. But would you fire Stefanski no. to get Bill Belichick? No. Really? What? Really? I, 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 I would not. Tony, that's crazy. <laughs> what? I would not. <laughs> what? <laughs> I like Stefanski. I like the offense that he's run. He could do it with Joe Flacco. Like he can kind of do it with into anybody. these offensive minds. You probably say, "Are you saying this about Minnesota?" Because they got. One I like of those Kevin O'Connell too. Yeah, they got yeah, one of those like guys Kevin too. You'd keep Kevin O'Connell over him. Yeah. No. There are, but Kevin O'Connell yeah. and Stefanski are kind of in this Mike McDaniel. They just haven't popped yet. Like, their offenses haven't Here, really. Now we're playing the game, boys. Let, let, I mean. Yeah, we are playing it. Well, <laughs> here's the game. Chris said that the Steelers for sure wouldn't. And oh, I'm for not, sure. For me, it's their last in the AFC North right for now. For me, the three like, safest coaches in the NFL, Tomlin, uh, Shanahan, and Andy Reid. I don't think Steelers fans agree with you on that. What if the Niners don't win the Super Bowl again with Kyle Shanahan? He's fine. Okay. Uh, Stugatz. Not so sure. Stugatz. Here's the, the funny thing about what you're doing. Any season that ends with a disaster at the end, like the hypothetical disaster you're giving every team at the end, yeah. then that coach comes open to questioning and vacancy. But that's reality, Dan. Yes. That's what happens. Exactly. People are emotional at that it's, time. Here's why it's not reality. It hasn't happened. <laughs> he's, he's creating the hypothetical under which it would happen. It hasn't happened yet. The Cowboys win the Super Bowl. Takes one. And Belichick calls Jerry Jones and says, I want to be your head coach. They've won the Super Bowl. Does he get rid of Mike McCarthy? I am not having an honest conversation in okay. good faith with serious people. Yeah. When they look me in the face and say they'd rather have Stefanski over Belichick, <laughs> that was, was crazy. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. What? It was ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, he is not a serious Kevin person. Kevin Stefanski, <laughs> this guy right is here, is a good coach. Not a serious he person. He is a good coach. 
Good defense, good offense. I like Stefanski. Unfortunately or fortunately, based on your perspective, we have now wound up the Stugatz take machine, and it is pinballing all over the room. Stugatz ended the last segment by saying, matter-of-factly, while waving uh, an assortment of sausages around, Great game. Great game we played there, guys. <laughs> Don't know the game that we played, but it was great. Yeah. I love playing games, and it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And now Stugatz has an assortment of takes because yesterday, after saying the Clippers are going to win the championship, Stugatz has now identified that the way he wishes to age in this space is to just say things that are more and more extreme and make you check on them in seven or eight years and he says the Clippers are going to win the championship this yeah, year. And yeah. you want to take a guess on how many championships he already has Anthony Edwards winning, even though Kevin Durant in his personal record book has not won any. These are bold takes, okay? I said last week that Bryce Young would be better than C.J. Stroud. Zach Wilson would be a top-five quarterback one day in the NFL. And yesterday I did say the Clippers would win an NBA championship this year. The Anthony Edwards one is one I have shared with Dan. Dan is asking you because I have not shared it with you guys. But, but you I think I think he's next. But you've shared, the, like, is this just a rinse repeat on the Giannis? He's going to win the next 10? I, I don't know. Take a guess. See what happens. Huh? I love a good game. He's given a number. He's got a number of championships for Anthony Edwards. Everyone's saying he is next. The, the Timberwolves are legitimately good. We'll see if Gobert can stay on the court at the end of playoff games because uh, their defensive efficiency is great, and they've only lost, what is it, five times all season? They, they seem uh, Carl Anthony Towns as an ancillary player who is fitting a role is a very good <laughs> ancillary player who can fit that role. The Timberwolves seem very good. The thing is, you guys don't seem to understand the game that Stugatz is playing, right? So, like, a segment ago, it was if the season ended today. What Stugatz is playing is if 10 seasons from now end today, this right. is what will have happened over the span of those 10 seasons with the information I yes. have today. You say it now, and if it sticks, then you throw it in everyone's face. If it doesn't, then everyone forgets about but it. But if it That's doesn't it. stick, it's not your fault because yeah. it's what would have happened if 10 seasons from now ended today. Right. And what happens in those 10 seasons, you can't control. Yeah. It's not what happened today. So two? Two championships nah, it's for too low. Edwards? That's not hot takey no, enough. No, no, no. I'm going to no, say no. fold. Four. Oh. Warmer. Oh, that Warmer. sounds like he's getting there. Dan, six, eight. What do you want to say? Four is the number that yes. he gave me. He's got him winning four I championships. Way to ruin the game, Chris. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's way that's slow for Stugatz. Usually he goes like, you know, like he's eight. gonna win nine of them. Yeah, but that would put him ahead of Jordan. And that's never gonna happen. I think so, it's because right. he's being serious about right. this. I think I he am being really serious. thinks Anthony <laughs> no, Edwards is gonna I'm win four being championships. Serious. The guy is so good. How many ISTs? <laughs> A Rod would be fixing the Timberwolves as the owner of the Timberwolves. Can I tell you how weird it is to see A Rod sit courtside in his perfectly groomed and and quaffed suits and hair and everything, sitting courtside at Heat games, rooting against the city of Miami? It is so bizarre to watch him fist pump when Anthony Edwards is making shots at the end of the games against the Heat. Absolutely strange. There's more than one of him, right? Like A Rod, there's more than one A Rod. Go like on. the Consecos. Like how is he? No, like the Jackson Five. Like how is Barry Jackson in five places at once? How is A Rod everywhere? How is he in Minnesota courtside and he's also on the inside the NBA set in Atlanta? How is you know sometimes maybe we look around and maybe catch a glimpse of A Rod? Like how is he everywhere at the same? time? I don't understand how he's. How's he at the AAA? How's he at baseball games? How's he at the Miss America pageant? How is he everywhere? Who are the teams that you guys look at? And you're like, they're not good. I don't care how what players they have. Because Minnesota's kind of in this category for me, but they're Charlotte, not. Charlotte, that's a different I, game. I have a better okay. one, and All they're right. actually kind of good. All right. The Orlando Magic are never good. That's they're, it. No, they're good this year. Yeah, they're this good. This year. And, and they've been and good before. Young, but I'm yes. going gonna, gonna to put Charlotte in that class. Never good. Just teams. Like, are there any football teams that it's just like, no. The Jets. They're not good. Yeah. I'm doing Charlotte, by the way, throughout history. Forever. I'm not doing just Charlotte basketball. I'm talking, <laughs> oh, talking just, about the I'm just talking How about, about the Wizards? Sports. <laughs> I'm the talking city? about Washington Wizards are pretty good, too, <laughs> as a nominee. But since we are speaking of Anthony Edwards, I did. How old is he? Can you guys look that up for me? Because he was in a controversy here, Stugatz. And salute to James Harden for really tightening up 
his private behavior so that uh, this kind of stuff never leaks out into the public in a way that is embarrassing. But uh, a couple of young players, Anthony Edwards, Zion Williamson, they have had their their bedroom habits spill out in front of people because, uh, you know, they do something in the DMs that can be traced. And Anthony Edwards, who right now is in a similar position to the one that Ja Morant was in last year, Stugatz, when he screwed it up with uh, bad social media behavior, where Michael Jordan made the template for this. If you're simply excellent at your sport, we can write the commercials around you and wait for you to grow up and create the mythology around you that becomes your image and becomes an economy, John Morant cost himself tons of money in the optics of everything that happened with him last year. And Anthony Edwards had leaked a DM conversation in which he told a woman, get an abortion, LOL. And what you saw happen after that was the economy around Anthony Edwards going out and saying, hey, that's not who this guy really is, the guy in the DMs saying, get an abortion, LOL, which sounds to me like the guy really is that, if he's telling a woman. I mean, he typed it out and he sent it. Right, but right. this has also been typed out from his account afterward, and it was sent. He's 22, by the way. He says, I made comments in the heat of a moment that are not me and that are not aligned with what I believe and who I want to be as a man. All women should be supported and empowered to make their own decisions about their bodies and what is best for them. I am handling my personal matters privately and will not be commenting on them any further at this time. Getting that real a look at the underbelly of where sports fame is and the dismissiveness of a sentence of get an abortion, LOL, hugely damaging to whatever it is that you want to represent publicly as yourself your team, and your league to be that age and come into that much money and try to traverse the gulf, Stugat, between fans want you to be somebody who's a symbol for their city and there are problems when you make money playing a game and have great riches and you treat other human beings like that in private. Whatever that sentence represents tells me more than the PR statement that comes afterward saying, that's not who I am. Well, what do you mean that's not who you are? Well, like, the what? PR statement is cleaning up the mess. I know, Dad. but what right. do you mean that's not who you are? Like, I don't know how that gets said that dismissively under any context. Like, you could be arguing with a woman in the DMs. You could be arguing with the mother of your potential child and be emotional but get an abortion, LOL, is not a mischaracterization. You wrote that. That's, that. That was not a heat of the moment thing. That's something that you actually thought that we now are privy to that allows us to look inside the mind and the life of a 22-year-old who needs to be better than that. Like just Not just publicly, though obviously publicly, but be better than that just as a human being. There's a bit of like Tom Brennan vibes. He's like, that's not who I am, even though that's what I said. I don't really believe that. And it just makes me think like throughout the years of any sport, we never had access to people leaking DMs, leaking texts like this, right? Imagine the stuff that we could have seen back in the oh, day. Oh, Tony, Michael Jordan would get exposed all the time by the National Enquirer, and then the machine would get to work and be like, Correct. it's the National Enquirer. It's not real. There would all sorts of stuff would be reported and it was only, it was never the mainstream media reporting it. It was always somebody tabloidy, but the stories were true. Like the tabloids didn't have the credibility that you needed to have, but Michael Jordan's reputation was never damaged by it because his machine would get to work and we wouldn't see this particular griminess, Stugatz. Anthony Edwards, the opportunity he has right now, Stugatz, Steph's old. LeBron's the oldest player in the league. The Suns don't even look right because of what is around Kevin Durant and Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. It is time, just like in football, the young quarterbacks are taking over for the old quarterbacks who had the old commercials. Well, the backups are taking over. 
and the young quarterbacks yep. and the Burroughs. Yes. And in this sport, Anthony Edwards clearly, everyone says this, he's next. All he has to do is win at the rate that he is winning. But you're going to see things as he becomes more famous, as a 22-year-old becomes more famous, that are going to show you what he is at 22. That doesn't mean it's what he's going to be 10 years from now. It doesn't mean that he's not going to mature out of this. It doesn't it's who even, he is now. It doesn't even mean that he's not going to learn from, right. from what this was. But I don't think there are a lot of 22-year-olds who can handle the general temptation that comes with what being Anthony Edwards is right now. I don't... I, I have not met a lot of them, and when I do meet them, I'm always stunned that they might be capable of handling that. But I would say there aren't a lot of 42-year-olds or 62-year-olds that can have their life altered in that fashion, where you go from being someone who doesn't have any intrinsic value to others growing up outside of loved ones, to monster fame where everybody wants to be around you, and now every sentence in your DMs is up there as a defining no characteristic more for who yeah. you are. No more privacy. Uh, LeBron handled it well, but I'm not certain he's the rule. He's probably the exception. He's one of the few who handled it very, very well. Harden, too. Like, Harden escapes all this. Like, all the stuff that we hear about Harden, he loves to party, he loves to go out, he's got the you know strip club banner in his name. Like, we haven't heard anything about Harden ever. Jordan Schultz is reporting the Chargers are interested in hiring Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> oh, new game. <laughs> what if Belichick calls them? What team <laughs> fires their coach for Harbaugh? <laughs> the Ravens is the juiciest one. Oh, oh wow. my God. Could you wow. imagine? Oh, my God. John chokes again and Jim comes in. Raven. Oh wow. Then who God. hires John? <laughs> Michigan. Oh, 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 the old switcheroo, Dan. Wow. <laughs> Why do you guys care so much about coaching transactions? So much fun. <laughs> this is so fun. Again, I remind you, the guy who was said to be the best for the last 20 years is whatever, 3-8 and eight at the bottom of the AFC East. 3-11. and 11. The comedian Brad Williams is going to join us here shortly. He's skyrocketing. He is growing in popularity. He has done a wise thing, making him... Self, Lebetard, and Stugat show adjacent. He has uh, increased his following. He's got a Netflix special. We will talk to him about that and other things. Actually, I don't think it's a Netflix special. We'll talk to him about wherever the hell it is. It's not Netflix, <laughs> I think. But uh, Stugatz is rampaging now because he's gotten to fire off some takes, and now he wants to do top five quarterbacks who need to show him something this weekend. And he was pestering Billy saying, let's go to the top five room where Tony did his top five earlier. But Billy's like, I don't have confidence in the audio of that room. And it, and Stugat saluted him for the maturity of that decision. Yeah. Doesn't seem like maturity. It just seems like don't use a room Fear. Uh, where the audio doesn't work. But I heard something that I think, is fairly shocking for Stugatz, and I don't know what it is that he was talking about. He said he was happy to overpay for something, and oh. I didn't think Stugatz would be happy to overpay for anything. So what is it that you were talking about that you were just – you are you are generally not someone who uh, parts with money easily. The way this works in terms of your relationship, I'm trying to take money. Yeah, with yeah. money is yeah. you get all of it and no one else gets any of it. That's yeah. generally your relationship with money. Right. What are you happy to overpay for? Express lanes. I am happy to overpay. I do it with a smile on my face, Dan. When you get to that junction where every single road turns into 95 South. And you need to get to the express lane so you can beat traffic, so you can get to the station on time or get to these studios on time. The other day, I am telling you, the traffic was so bad. The express lanes were set at $10.75. Ooh, that's the highest I've ever seen it. And I drove through it with a smile on my face. I said, wee! And, th and then as soon as you got into them, you came to a complete stop. Yep. I did. Yeah, it's the worst. Gouging, <laughs> One lane goes down on the express lane, and you are sitting in traffic for two and a half hours, wondering why you spent ten seventy five. There are there are a few <laughs> things in life that make me as angry as watching regular traffic zoom by me as I sit in this express lane, bumper to bumper. 
Put it on the poll, please, Juju. Do you get unreasonably angry as you're in the paid lane and traffic in the non-paid lane is speeding past you? I will tell you guys, when LeBron first came down here, LeBron, Wade, and Bosh, they would set the express lanes at like $25, $30 on game nights. No, I've never yes. seen it that Roy high. knows. No, in yeah. Super Bowls, it's really, really expensive. I've never yeah. seen it as high. As I, the highest I had seen it. You live right next to the arena. The highest I've seen it was like $7. I've never seen it what? as high as $10. Seven. I took a $10 no, the no, other day. No, no, yeah. no, no. The highest I've seen is $12. No, I feel like I've seen 100 All right, there's That Billy. was game seven. Uh, no, for real. Yeah. Billy, Why would I make that up? Billy, what would I get out of what, that? What? You go get, I get my box. jollies off go telling sit, fictitious stories. You know, you're going to yell <laughs> at him. You're yes. going to get mad at him. Yes. Billy's go right sit. about this. Get He's not right about He might be right. It's never been $100. It's not. That's not a thing. You just made it up. And, yes, you got your jollies off. That's what you like to do. That's where you get your jollies off is right there, just being an asshole. Well, it's <laughs> Christmas time. so <laughs> my, nom- my nomination is car getting my car cleaned. I am always going to overpay for that. I don't want just the $22 you're going to vacuum and clean the outside. You want the works. I want, hey, I'm selling this thing. The works. I'm selling this thing. I want you to take two hours to do this. Do you feel, do you feel, I I feel ridiculous sometimes when I give the finger guns and I'm like, I want the works. But but that's what it's called. Really get in there. Really get in there. It's called the The works. The works, right. Billy, that get- was awfully quick, Billy. That was not two minutes. There's a meeting in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Should have gone to the top five room. <laughs> I want to go there. There's a meeting in the penalty box. There's nothing more infuriating than spending money to get your car clean, and then you get back in your car, and the little, like, cubby that like the little like slot and which like in your door is not cleaned it's like you got to get every inch of this thing when it's detailed yeah like, like when the, you get the works right right right. the ins i'm talking about the interior like the, i don't want like this this just the vacuuming like no 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 i want you getting in every crack what do you get for the works everything you get it's what, a what, scam what, i feel it, like it's not a scam because no. the next one is the complete no. i mean <laughs> it's a complete it's a complete detailing it is a wax it's every it's everything that place offers is what it is that you're getting it's going to take hours and it's going to be probably more than a hundred dollars if you want to get everything and then they look at you for the tip works. on top of that and if you're anything like me like i leave all of that until the last moment where i just can't take it anymore how dirty my car is so the works is the only option like i need everything done to this car right now speaking of tipping at a car wash what do you guys do do you hand the guys who are you know cleaning off the car at the end do you hand them the money or do you put it in the jar the place i go there's like a big bin that's like i don't like putting it in the bin though Hmm. i like them to know that i have put money into the I have to stand there and be like, "Oh, you show him, okay." <laughs> uh, until I see eye contact with the guy doing my car, like, "All right, right, there it is. You saw it." The problem with this, though, Stugatz, is that most people listening to this are no longer dealing with cash tip transactions. Uh, so it's uh, uh, you have a Venmo. This is something well, it's not a tip. Then I this mean. is something that has happened that has taken away some of the personal human touch involved with making sure that the person you're giving your generosity <laughs> knows selfishly that you're the giver of that generosity. It's most important during this holiday season of giving to make sure the most important thing is that people know you're the giver, not the giving, but that you're the giver. What's the point of being generous if no one knows? Put it on the <laughs> poll at Lebetard Show. Oh. What's the point of being? generous? generous if no one knows what how do you do the thing when it's like you are paying with cash and something you paid for was one dollar and 97 cents you hand them two dollars and they give you back three pennies it's always a sad move of dropping those three pennies in a tip jar like hey take my trash don't spend it all in one place here you go yeah i went to a chinese spot the other day and i had 50 bucks in cash that i i had somehow i don't know but it ended up being thirty nine dollars and like ninety seven cents or ninety six cents. So the guy gave me two tens or two fives and four pennies, and I was like, I cannot give this guy four pennies, but I'm also not giving him five bucks. Can't give him five bucks. Five. <laughs> bucks. Feels like an easy five. That's on him though. I mean, five feels singles like a, next time. Feels like an easy yeah. five. Yeah. You uh, you have to ask for your fives to be returned in singles in that spot. I have felt great guilt of throwing four cents in the jar when what is. In the wake of the jangling echo, is a thank you when I don't deserve it. I don't. I, you just thanks, then take. Buddy. You <laughs> then grab a hundred and just put it in there. You're like, you all know, right, fine. You, you should know, thank them. You, you know mean. how much change you just gave me. You know that I just threw it in. It didn't rattle in a way that, that sad penny sound. There was, it was a penny falls much differently <laughs> a than a quarter.
it feels different too. Like when there's just a normal tip jar, I don't feel that bad about it. But if it's a tip jar that's like, hey, these are for student loans, or like, where they're trying oh, to guilt scam. you into it, where they're those trying to say like, hey, yeah, don't fall th- for this it. is yeah. what the tip is actually for. That's when I kind of I end up feeling bad about it. There's also this time of year of, would you like to round up on your purchase for donation? I'll give it to you in December. That's it. You get it in December. Don't ask me any other month. Right. But do they? They get it. To I, round it up? I'll round up a dollar. In December, I'll find, what is it for? The charity, the right. kids thing? All right, fine. Okay. Let's do that. If if we were a show in which the producer didn't all have microphones and were required to, you know, produce, somebody would have found for me by now the highest ever sun pass Most rate. I've found is 1050. <laughs> I've been looking for the 100 for like 10 minutes 10 now. 1050 was the I other day. I found 1050 a couple of times. And I'm looking specific to Miami, so... Right. Other places, mate, I'm telling you I saw $100. <laughs> you did not. I Dan, I'm telling you I paid $50 okay. for a heat game. No, no, I'm telling you you're both wrong. And I what? believe that what happened to Billy is that he was driving without his glasses. So it was $10 <laughs> and it looked like 100 Because nobody is paying $100. It was empty. I mean, you're going to get there quick. <laughs> I do want to talk a little more, though, about what is correct with tipping. You have heard me before, Stugat, say that I find it generally infuriating that a place will not take my cash, that they say they are card only, but then I see the jar next to the cash register for tips, and that absolutely takes cash. I've seen it a number of different times. It is offensive to me as someone who believes in the power power of the American dollar. It's offensive to me. But you can't just throw three cents in there, can you? Like, what is... You can't if if the way that we're doing this is you've gotten a penny for change, you throwing it in there is the same as throwing it in the garbage, is it not? Does anyone now listening to us right now, would anyone see the value of me giving them a penny? I've told you before that I'm a big change guy. If you guys have change, I'll take it all right now. (laughs) I picked up a nickel on the floor the other day. It was my first time since COVID that I picked up change from the floor. It was such a beautiful moment. Wow. I asked Wayne Huizenga one time, as one of the world's wealthiest men, the lowest denomination of currency who would bend over to pick pick up off the floor, and he said a penny. He said he would bend down. I know you, yes, you, I know, are more dismissive of a penny (laughs) than Wayne Huizenga is. But will you put a penny in that jar and not feel guilt? Like, to me, you're better off walking away with the guilt of not giving someone anything at all, then they've given you one penny in change and you've just dumped what is the equivalent of debris in their jar. I feel like if it's going from their hand to yours and in one motion your hand takes it from them and sweeps it all into the tip jar, that's just like, I'm giving you whatever's here. I'm sorry that this time it happened to be four cents, but this is my routine. (laughs) I take it from your hand into the jar. I don't even think about it. It's just my process. I feel like you can get away with that. I Here's, feel like you shouldn't feel bad. You should feel good about giving something because no, some people no. put all that in their pocket yeah. and go home. Here's the thing about pennies. If you collect 1,550 of them on August 29th, 2018, you could have taken the express lane in Atlanta because it was 1550. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I, I have a confession to make. Um, so there was one time we came back from our honeymoon in Thailand, and Thailand oh. deals in a lot of coins. Brought COVID. Possibly. And there was one time where I had a you bunch of You did not those, put Taiwanese Thai currency. <laughs> <laughs> there was one time I was picking up food and I just had it in my pocket from those pants or whatever. And I dropped in like a bunch of you coins. Like I was like, let's go. That's a heady play. Like 50 bucks of Thai <laughs> coins. You, 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 that is almost like right on the cusp of fraud. You left there feeling good about yourself, though, because it's not just that you're a giver, but you got away with something. Ooh. It sounded the same. It's, the guy was so happy. He's like, wow, thank you, man. I was like, you got it. I will always, if it's a couple of pennies, I will throw in a dollar with it. You have to. I, because yes. I, I cannot I cannot simply but throw it. But $5? In. I mean, you're rich, Dan. A dollar for you. That's like, ooh, that's it, Dan? A dollar? Oh, <laughs> Five dollars is too much, Tony. I'm with Five you. bucks and if, four pennies? If, I couldn't do it. The, I couldn't if, do it. Five dollars? No, if your choice is between Tony said he had two fives and four cents, and he's boxed in at that point. Because I would ask for change. And now now I'm uh, making- Put it on the scroll. Dan Levitard asked for change an, for in, five. An inefficient transaction. The guy's going for the five dollar tip. Yeah. <laughs> Rappaport's now saying that Aaron Rodgers is getting activated off injury. Oh, God! What is no, happening? No, no. Get out of here. Loser.
Brad Williams, our friend, has a new hour-long special. It is called Starfish. It will premiere Thursday on the Live Nation streaming platform called Veeps, V-E-E-P-S. Uh, he is with us now. He is joining us from what looks like a very sad office, perhaps in the back of a comedy club of some sort. It doesn't look like it's the height of entertainment wherever it is that he is. Uh, where are you? And is that a calendar? Is it that is. an old-timey, old-fashioned <laughs> calendar behind your substantive forehead? This is my office. <laughs> this, is, this is how I've this is how I've been regulated to in my house. I have a lovely, wonderful new home which my wife has decorated immaculately and and this is my corner my sad <laughs> calendar which is filled by the way uh-huh. filled it could but, uh, it could yes, be it, it could be less uh yeah it could be more sad if it weren't filled you're very busy you're you're a a you are a very popular comedian very successful right now touring the country with many dates all over the country uh you would not know that from this setup uh, right now, it looks very sad, and this is why you need to go to Veeps.com and get this special because you, I, I got to upgrade my office. I got to send the Asian dwarf baby to college one day. So, yes, uh, get the special. You guys put a, a book about a lion. You fans put a book about a lion <laughs> from Greg Cody at the bestseller list. You can't show up for a comedy special, which is going to make you laugh. So, uh I need the Levitard fans to show up, show out, so I can, uh, so I can, uh, so I, I can upgrade my office and be way less sad. And by the way, what the hell is going on in the back row of the shipping container right now? <laughs> well, are you talking about Tony, Billy, or Jeremy? I'm looking at one Jeremy Taché. Listen, my people have gone through a lot right now. We got kicked out of Snow White. We got kicked out of the new Wonka movie. We got tall people taking our jobs left and right, and then you come in, Jeremy, in elf face. What is this? Oh, it's not a costume. I'm an elf. Well, technically I'm a human, but I was raised by elves. You're an elf? I haven't seen you at any of the meetings. Good God, man. He's an angry elf. Are you offended? Are you, uh, on, on behalf of your community, it appears that way, Dan, is it yes. cultural appropriation, or what is the equivalent? Yes, he, th- this is cultural appropriation. And I don't care if you're like, but it was a gritted death punishment. Uh, all right, if they had some other offensive grit of death punishments, uh, w- 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 would you have done that? Would you have dressed up like uh, Do- Dr. Ken Jong from The Hangover and gone full? Would you have done that? Why is it okay to do to my people? We're losing jobs left and right, Jeremy. <laughs> he must be a South Pole elf. I, I I I can't stand this man. I'm going to bring this up at the meeting. Let's play. I, you're not alone, Brad. <laughs> let's uh, let, 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 let's play for the people here. I I got uh, my friend Jeff Miller, who you ran into on an airplane going somewhere, sent me a photograph uh, with you and with this video of you at the Denver Broncos game. The Broncos, I believe also sent this out. Uh, the Broncos are big fans of Brad Williams. Let's play for the audience. Uh, this video, uh, of a very happy Brad Williams, uh, back before they were losing to the lions, just crushing it by several touchdowns. Uh, very confident. Are you a very confident dancer, Brad? Yes, I'm a very confident dancer. And, when a dwarf dances, whatever I do looks like a win. Just whatever happens is like, wow, good for him. He did it. Well done. So uh, the, the, the amazing part about that, that video is if you look at it. The sideburns on the guy next to you? Yes. The guy sitting next to me has mutton chops. He looks like a captain in Andrew Luck's army. And he is lip syncing uh-huh. to the song "Who Let the Dogs Out." Yes, that's correct. To me, that is the most impressive thing about that video—not the dwarf dancing, but the fact that a middle-aged man with mutton chops is rocking out to "Who Let the Dogs Out." That man is an American hero and uh, should be celebrated accordingly. That is an excellent reference by you, uh, Andrew Luck's army, because I did not even notice that guy 
uh, because of how vigorously you were dancing and because of how you commanded uh, the stage uh, with your dancing, that I somehow did not notice a man who absolutely looks like Ahab. Uh, it's not <laughs> It's not just Andrew Luck's army. That man looks like he spent a lot of time at sea in the 1920s. <laughs> Yes, that's that's my friend Rob. He's actually the master distiller of of Metallica's whiskey called Blackened, and, uh, and he should be getting his flowers for 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 holding his own net next to a dwarf dancing to the Baja Men. That is uh, that is your friend. You two walking into a place, I imagine, <laughs> creates something of a visual stir. You and him. I've found out that if you add me with just about anyone, when we walk into a place, it's like, okay, what's happening here? My opening act on the road is a fantastic comedian. Uh, Chris has seen him. Mike's seen him. His name is JB Ball. He, there's Rob. Look at that sexy man with uh, his w w with his mutton chops, rocking them. That 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 that's how you know he's a man. He rocks mutton chops confidently. But my opening act is a comedian, great comic named J.B. Ball, who is about a six foot three black man. And sometimes we walk into towns and we're like looking around like, ah, look at the riffraff in this town. And then we have to pause for a second and go, all these people just watched a dwarf and a six foot three black man walk into their town together. What's what's their reaction? What is the story of these mutton chops? How old are they? Clearly, they're a distinguishing <laughs> feature for this person. And um, for the audio it's audience, amazing. Stugatz, I don't know how I would explain this, but imagine that Santa Claus's <laughs> beard uh, just stopped as it got toward his chin. Uh, Santa! I it, know him! Like is, a reverse goatee. It is, you know? uh, it, it is, I don't know how to explain this to the audience. Can you help me with this, Brad? Because they are about the thickest mutton chops I've ever seen, and I imagine they've been a distinguishing feature for this gentleman for many years. Yes. Uh, when Rob and I walk into uh, an establishment together, we look like hipster Santa and hipster elf. Like, we look like the, we look like the Santa and the elf that just aren't caring anymore. And uh, by the way, this is, a, this is a really tough time for me, Jeremy, in, in addition to you being an elf. You can take off that outfit and go to a mall and blend in, okay? I can't go to the malls nowadays because everyone just assumes I work there. I get thrown in a line. I, I, I get asked where certain things are. This is the second worst time of the year to be a dwarf, the second worst time of the year. What's, What's the, the worst? worst? The worst time of the year is obviously St. Patrick's Day. I hate that holiday. You guys can go out, have a lot of fun. Chris Cody, you're feeling me on this as a ginger. You you, you guys can go out, have the fun, drink the beer. I don't leave my house on St. Patrick's Same. Day because people just get drunk and stare at me and goes, he knows where it is. <laughs> it's not good. I don't leave my house. Uh, uh, St. Saint Patrick's Day is the dwarf version of the purge. Put it on the poll, please. Is, it's a great poll. Is St. Patrick's Day, and put in parentheses that Brad Williams asked the question, <laughs> is St. Patrick's Day the dwarf version of The Purge? Uh, your special is dropping uh, December 21st. Uh, is that symbolic? Yes. Is that is that done on purpose? Yes, because that, December 21st, is the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. Look at that marketing. Look at that. You're good. <laughs> done it and done. <laughs> so, so on the winter solstice, you will think of me and you will go to veeps.com and you will get the special starfish. Now, unfortunately, uh, I, I called my special starfish without remembering that Limp Biscuit released an album called Chocolate Starfish in the Hot Dog Flavored Water. So now everyone thinks that the name of my special is a reference to anal. Excellent. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. and that is what I think of uh, second when I think of starfish. The first thing I think of is the starfish, but that second, Limb Biscuit's uh, asshole reference to starfish. How much time, Brad, did you spend thinking about the decor in your office? Uh, <laughs> about uh, 31 seconds. Uh, that shows. How about, about a light it. bulb? I mean, um, <laughs> listen, the, the sad part is, is, is I'm going to. I'm going to turn this over. Oh, no. Hello. Over here, there's a there's a lovely painting of Robin Williams, which would be an even better background. 
That would be a great background. But you can control that. Yeah, but. why aren't you using that? <laughs> why is the calendar your background? <laughs> I thought it. I. I. This is. I have a desktop. It's plugged in. I can't yank it off the wall and put it over there. The, the the microphone is attached to the desktop. I wanted the audio to be good more than the visual. That's why I chose this sad Milton from Office Space corner in my house in my office, and not the giant lovely painting of a comedic hero who once gave me the greatest compliment of my life when he when he met me saw my act and called me Prozac with a head <laughs> can you tell us please how it's going for you with other comedians who are famously competitive about things famously jealous famously insecure uh, you're rising in a way that's obvious to everyone. You have had great success here recently. Uh, I believe this is the very top of your career so far. May it continue to climb. But how is this going over in the competitive world of other competitive comedians? Uh, so far, so good. But I was at the comedy store a few nights ago, and there was a comic who saw me and said, man, I've been seeing your ticket sales and seeing the venues that you're playing God, I wish I was a dwarf. That would really help out my career. And I just thought to myself, you can have it. By the way, you 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 can have it. Like you can wipe your own butt. I have back problems. I have T-Rex arms. I have bidets in my house. That is what helps me. I take showers on the road. And if it's ever a situation where neither of those are available, I go on Craigslist and try to find someone with a very specific fetish. You can take the dwarfism, okay? You can have it. I'll write other jokes. And by the way, if you want to be disabled as a hook, I don't know. There, there, there's tools to help you do that. You can. You, you... <laughs> what an insult, though. I'm but sorry. But plural sounded kind of like a flex, though. If we're going to be honest. It did, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like it, it, it. He's trying to flex on not being disabled. I. It, it's fine. You, you, you can go out and and you, you, you can saw off an arm. You, you can be like that guy in 127 hours, and presto, you have a brand new 20 minutes, okay? So if, if, if it's hurting you that much, go out and really take a chance. Were you hurt by this? Like, did you walk away from that saying, what kind of asshole says that to me as if I don't have any other talent other than being short? <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of hurt, but you know what? That's okay. I'm okay with it. I know that I do other jokes in my act. I know that I don't just stand on stage for an hour and and say, I could take a bath and a thimble. That's weird. Like, that's not my material. So I'm confident in myself. Uh, and whatever excuses that particular comedian has to make as to why they're not as successful, that's okay. Uh, but I'm confident in myself. I'm confident in my special Starfish, which will be streaming on Veep's tomorrow and uh i'm confident going out on tour in 2024 we have over 70 dates booked i'm booked new year's eve 2024 that's how far in advance and uh it's pretty nuts so i'm thanking all the fans that come out and especially fans of this show because they i do a meet and greet after every show and they always come up and say hey brad i get the show and that is awesome i always love hearing that who said it brad <laughs> Dan Cook? Yeah. not G <laughs> great now he's gonna hear this and text me now now he's gonna think that i outed him Damn it, the new hour-long special is called starfish we tell fans of this show to support the people who support us veeps is the live nation streaming platform and it premieres tomorrow thank you brad good seeing you always a pleasure guys thank you so much jeremy i better see you at the meetings See you there. <laughs> Folks, it is time for a Against the Spread. Brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code Dan. Roy, turn this down a little for me, please. Thank you. I'm, I'm struggling get right now. One. Hold There's on. a lot of things I got to do here. Ride the game, Roy. 
<laughs> it Brought is like a, like a foot away from your hand. Like, right, right there. Right That's a good point. <laughs> Brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DAN when you sign up on the app. A limited, a limited time offer for new customers. Woo! How do you feel about how you handled all of that? <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Wow. Chris Cody's in charge today. You need me to go first? Please. I am going to go first, Dan. Oh, really? I mean, you had Dan ready to go. No, I want to go first. All right, you might change his mind. Yeah. All right, Dan, you go first. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'd prefer you to go first. Wow. <laughs> See? I am going with the... L.A. Rams minus four on Thursday Night Football against oh. the Saints. The Saints stink. Stafford, this sne sneaky one of the better teams. Seven, of all the seven, seven, seven and seven teams, I love the Rams the Chris, most. Chris, go sit in the penalty yeah, box. I need to leave. Like, yeah, I just, just get out of here. Like, you couldn't have been any worse the thunder. first couple of minutes of oh. this segment. Roy, what are you uh, selecting against? Against the Rams! Rams! I like that. Into the spirit. Yeah. You know, with Feeling the uh, with the uh, Aaron Rodgers news, I figured that the Jets are probably going to disappoint this week. They are playing the Commanders at home. The Commanders are three point dog. I'm going to go with the Commanders against, against the spirit. spirit. We also don't really understand the news. They activated him, but it seems like they're activating him just so he could practice. But he's not going to play, according to Robert Saul, which is cute. Loser he thinks that he makes those decisions. <laughs> I don't think he's going to play. It would be moronic, even by the standards of moron that the Jets generally produce for 40 years, to play him. They're activating him just so he can say he was active. This is all asinine. Well, well it's, no, part he, of, it's part of his rehab process is yeah, what he they're can't, saying. He can't yes. be on the practice right. field, which they view as invaluable to his teammates, so... This is a technicality so that he's allowed to interact I'm with them. I'll buy it. By this loser. Tony, uh, Tony, please give me something. Uh, give me some information against the spread. Dan, today, for against the spread, brought to you by HMS Bonds and DraftKings. Uh, we are going to be taking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield, who've been playing excellent, against the Jacksonville Jaguars in a battle for Florida. Dano, minus one, taking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against, against the spread. Against the spread. It's FMS Bond. Billy? Oh, I didn't want to give them the whole shout. Uh, well, I mean, that's first. where I work. That's where, you know. I know. Murray! Originated. Oh, that's where it was. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's where I was slinging munis. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Billy, what are you doing against the spread? I'm going to take the Giants plus 11 and a half against the Eagles. Hmm. Christmas Day miracle, Dan. You never know what's going to happen. It's a big spread. I'm not saying they're going to outright win the game. Right. 11 and a half, though, is a lot of You're points. You're just doing it again. <laughs> I was so tempted to do charges against Bills, but I'm not going to get crazy. <laughs> Stugatz, what do you got? Dan, big game this weekend. Big game this weekend. Some might say a Super Bowl preview. Ravens 49ers in San Francisco. Ravens getting five points on the road. I believe in Baltimore. I don't believe in San Francisco. Therefore, I am taking Baltimore to not only cover the five points, but to win the game outright. I am taking the Ravens plus five against San Francisco against the, the Spurs. Spurs. So you don't believe in San Francisco? Uh, not you're now. The, you're the only person watching football who well, doesn't believe that the San Francisco 49ers are great. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, got to stay healthy. I don't know if they're going to stay healthy. Brock Purdy needs to do it in the playoffs. I don't know if he can do it in the playoffs because I've never seen him do it. So, I have a game here that Billy said he didn't want to get crazy with, but I think it's time to get a little crazy. The Buffalo Bills no are way. minus 11 and a half against the L.A. Chargers. They've been playing incredible football. I'm petrified of them as a Dolphins fan. <laughs> Buffalo Bills, <laughs> minus 11 and a half. Wow. Tony's laughing. Uh, against the spread. The spread. Tony is laughing because he heard what Chris Cody whispered in my ear while you were talking, which is the following. The start of that segment is going to sit with me for a while. <laughs> Does somebody need a hug? We've all been there, Chris. It totally I mean. fell apart. I am going to take the Sixers. They are playing the T-Wolves tonight. 
and I'm going to take the Sixers minus three and a half. The Timberwolves are very good. They've only lost five times all season. Just played last night. I, I like what you're thinking here, huh? Um, they played a I couple hope, of nights ago, right? I hope they played ago, last night. Right? Uh, it was a couple of nights maybe ago. Maybe I got that wrong. Yes, oh, a couple nights ago. You yeah. got that wrong. It I was did. a contribution yeah. that was useless and wrong. Yes. Oh, Not man. helpful in any way. <laughs> and sorry. also, as an added I'm bonus, sorry. also wrong. <laughs> Thank you for your non-help help i was trying to support you i mean I know. anthony edwards four titles I know. please uh, i didn't so realize he was 22 i'm thinking about five maybe six even please support me jordan with accurate information well jordan has eight in my personal record i saw the other day that bloomberg reported something that i haven't noticed but i'm assuming that the audience has noticed because yes there has been inflation all over the place in ways that are uncomfortable and um make me sad, but I had not realized the number that Bloomberg is reporting, which is since the pandemic started, restaurant prices are up 24%, up by a quarter, basically. And while I had noticed, obviously, that everywhere prices have gone up on everything, I had not noticed that it was that much. Had you noticed, Stugatz, that it was that much? Because the pandemic has changed any number of things, uh, including just restaurants being able to stay in business. I've said this before. I don't know if the audience knows this, but it is such a hard way to make a living. The restaurant business, uh, the Hulu series, The Bear, that shows you sort of the frenzy of it. 80% of restaurants fail. You just open it. You got all your dreams in there. You got to work so much of the time just to keep it open and keep your employees functioning. And and day to day, you're running on a treadmill. And 80% of the time, you get failure. Your finances are gone and you're doomed. Had you noticed that it was at 24%? Uh, I haven't noticed if it was 24%. I just noticed that I'm paying a lot more for food at restaurants and at the grocery store than I was, I don't know, six months ago. So, yeah, I've noticed it. Well, three years. It's the pandemic that fast. Uh, it, it sort of fast-forwarded all this stuff. The Bear, you talk about this show. I've worked in the restaurants. That is such a crock, that show. It is not that Whoa. intense in what? those restaurants. Every episode of this show, it is the most intense thing. And I've been in these in, in kitchens before. Before. It's They're not short staffed, Chris. It's just the franticness of that show is exhausting. It is one of the signature staples of that show. It's all it's that way on purpose to give off the 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 tumult that you is, want nothing going on when you watch the show. I, I get mean, what you're saying that a, a show about a boring <laughs> restaurant wouldn't be as entertaining. You want to just play cards Pete, in the back, hang it out. A lot of people like are like, man, that's I can't believe that's what restaurants are like, and they're not. Well, wait a minute. What job did you do? Were you in the kitchen? I was F O H. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Front of oh, house you understand guy. Yeah. Look at that face. I got to put in front of house. <laughs> but the the general undercurrent of the bear, the thing that I remember about that show is that they elevated the stress to a place that you could feel it watching on television. It's what it's what they were going for. The Jamie Lee Curtis hour long episode that starred. Odin Kirk and all of those famous people, what they're going for is just flogging you in the face with the intensity of a stressful atmosphere. Um, I don't generally think of restaurants in Miami as having very good service or having people who are happy working there because so much of the clientele can be rude and mean and, and treat people poorly. I don't think of them as happy environments generally, except for the places that have the best customer service, and there are not many of them. I just can't believe that prices have gone up that much in restaurants. Like, everyone is going to feel – I'm assuming everyone listening to this is saying, yeah, I felt the price hike. I just didn't know it was that much. You mentioned the Jamie Lee Curtis episode. That's the second episode, the second and last episode of season two. That was some of the greatest minutes of television I've ever seen. That was breaking bad levels, that episode. My wife was the other day like, man, we can't go out to dinner for under 100 bucks anymore. I'm like, oh, three glasses, three glasses of wine didn't help. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they've, they've also uh, put up the number of alcohol, too. That's, that's that creeped up easily. <laughs> you know, if, if you're an elf like me, you don't really have to worry about the prices going up because we stick to four main food groups. Candy, candy canes, candy corn, oh, and Get syrup. Get out of here. Shut up, Jeremy. <laughs> you speak for all of us, Tony. <laughs> All right, boys, so I was here for the Turk Off yesterday, but I was in the back. I wasn't on the show, 
and I've been in the midst of a three-day water fast. And I feel like you're a guy that is into like water fast like that occasionally. I am somebody who's just been recommended a three-day fast, a day, just bone broth. All bone broth sucks, by the way. Have isn't you ever that had bone to broth? like? Isn't that to like get rid of cancer stuff? I've heard if you go three straight days, that's it's, it's cancer. seven days. If you do seven days of water only fast, you eliminate a lot of the cancer cells. I don't know what the exact percentage is. Everybody's different, but there's like certain aspects of fasting that are super healthy for you. It resets your immune system, helps with a lot of stuff, right? But yesterday during the Turk off was one of my one of my moments where I was like, damn, I'm in day two of day three. I'm going to end today uh, the fast today. I had, the last food, solid food that I had eaten was Sunday night. Oof. So your boy is hungry. And I saw Roy's turkey and I just stared at it. <laughs> I was just looking at it like, my mother's watering just talking about it right now. I just feel like a, one bite of turkey, like what could that have harmed in your fast? Everything. Okay. It breaks my fast. <laughs> The fast, the point of the fast is to give your digestive system total, total uh, emptiness and no fatigue. Make it stop working for a while so that you can replenish without it having to do anything. And if you give it any kind of, like there are a couple of things you can do, like lemon or aloe and stuff that won't interfere with it. But if you put any sugar or any food in it, it spikes not your insulin, which so is what kicks Just squeezing a lemon, out. is that what we're talking about No, it's just some water, mix it up a little bit, you know. Oh, cayenne bone, pepper. Bone broth is also okay for whatever the reasons are. This is, uh, a lot of people are swearing by the intermittent fasting of 16 hours and throwing in the occasional two or three day fast. Billy doesn't have time for any of this. It's just one of, it, this is just the latest fad and a bunch of fads that three years from it now we're going like to find wife. out that's not actually how it works. Because that's what happens with all of these. Yeah. It's like, oh, you know, you're not supposed to eat bread. Oh, you can only eat bread. You're not supposed to be this. You're not, oh, you can only eat that. What are you doing? Whatever happened to breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's BS. It's, a lie. it's bullshit. Yeah. It was, it was dairy BS. industry. They Bre were trying to breakfast. make it happen. It's bullshit. You guys are aware, right? I'm not breaking news to anybody. Maybe I am to somebody listening to this, that the word breakfast is to break the fast. What? Yep. Attaboy, Dano. Good teammate. This guy's right. been yeah. listening to a lot of stuff. Guys, I like that, Dan. Right. That's to Dan's point. I fast every day when I'm sleeping. And then when I wake up, I break that shit. Who was that an impression It sounded of? like Jim Carrey. Yeah, uh, it from was. Ace Ventura. That's exactly what it <laughs> I was. I got that, too. He channeled that. Tony, how have you felt? Uh, Terrible, Dan. Do you feel weak? Uh, so here's the thing. I was also working out pretty hard Why? during the fast. Oh, no. Just to kind of really rev up the system. But um, last night I was struggling. My wife got food, and I was just, like, staring at her food. And she's like, can you please leave because you're making me uncomfortable. Well, the good news is we still have turkey. It's in the refrigerator I'm for you. I'm going to break my fast with Roy's turkey. That's how much wow. respect I put on Roy's name right now. Thank you. Brother. Roy, we have to. Now that you're the reigning champion, we have to figure out a way to do this again because Roy has said, and I don't know where this ranks for you in terms of crowning achievements of your lifetime, but you are a proud cook, you're a good cook, and you won while sort of handcuffed because – you're of the belief that if you had gotten the turkey that you wanted to get, that didn't have to be brined twice, that you would have made an even better turkey than the one that is universally being applauded in a way that has shown grace from Greg Cody that I've never seen from him in his lifetime. Oh, absolutely. I think that it would have been probably five times as better. I like the idea of, like, my dad would have said that's his specialty. Like, Roy, we can all pick our specialty, and then Roy's like, yeah, I'll make that better than you. Roy, I don't know what's more amazing there, that you came up with a totally made-up stat. Oh, it's absolutely made five up. Five times, or that you did it with the poor English of five times is better, which is not in any way correct. Well, I didn't want to go ten times. That seemed like it was too much. Maybe twice as good. And that made-up stat of the day is brought to you by Venmo. Really? Your money, your move. Really? That's the stat of the day? Way to go, Chris. That is the That's stat of the day. He's back. He's back. He's back. He's Chris back. Cody That's rallying. Chris Cody rallying with a sponsored made-up stat of the day with five times as better. He's five times as better as Mike Ryan. He's Chris Cody, executive producer in training. Except we can't use it. That's right.